that has all the ingredients of a classic race. We're at the midpoint of a season that has seen cars go faster than ever before. Too fast, say those in authority, and as a consequence, we may never again see cars racing as fast on this track as we will see them today. There's a new face on the pole position, and a Detroit nameplate on the number one starting car that hasn't been there in nearly four years. For more on this and what we'll see in here today, let's go now to my CBS broadcast colleague high in the announce booth, Ken Squire. Well, thank you very much, Chris. It is a spectacular day for CBS Live Sports Action, commencing with our 200-lap, 400-mile event here in Michigan, and then moving on this afternoon to the Cannon Greater Hartford Open. Pat Summerall, Ken Venturi, your host, standing by for that competition. The stories are many and varied here, but a couple really take priority. Item one is a guy named Bill Elliott. Three years ago, a crowd larger than three, and he was too shy to talk. But he came out of this racetrack and won his first super speedway event here. He beat the odds, he beat the heat, and he beat Dale Earnhardt that day with a spectacular run, competition right to the very finish. Then in 1985, he sat on the pole and overwhelmed Darrell Waltrip by some 13 seconds. Last year, lap 196, after a seesaw battle throughout the entire contest, he pulled into victory lane, having defeated Harry Gant. Three in a row for Elliott. He stretches for number four here this afternoon, and that gets him to within one of the overall record held by Richard Petty at Richmond, Virginia, for five straight events. Now, another story of major consequence here today is Tim Richmond. Last December, the question was, would Richmond live until the next hour? The question at this hour is, will he win his third in a row? Two weeks ago, Pocono, Pennsylvania, he came home first, then went to Riverside, California, and did it again. The mischievous, flamboyant one, a driver larger than life himself, is ready to try to make it three, and he's standing by with Mike Joy on pit road right now. Well, I'm up at third starting spot, Ken Squire, with Bill Elliott, the man who has an incredible streak of his own going here. In the morning, Buddy Baker, some other drivers pace up and down pit road, kind of nervous, but you don't look nervous. You look like all you want to do is hop in this car and do what you do best and seem to enjoy best, and that's go racing. Well, you know, the one thing about it, once you do get in a race car, you can get away from everything, and that's one thing Richard Petty always said. He said the, the time he looked forward to was getting in a race car. You know, and I've enjoyed racing. Uh, Michigan's been good for me in a lot of ways in a lot of the past several years, but still yet this is another race. Do you see yourself as a favorite today? Well, I feel like I'm a contender, but still yet there's a lot of guys out here that are running good. You know, and everything's going to be critical uh, as far as tires, pit stops, and being in the right place at the right time. Bill, good luck today. There's another fellow here with a streak going of his own. He's won the last two NASCAR races, and he's with Dave Despain. Tim Richmond's brush with death last year doesn't seem to have taken a whole lot out of him. Tim, you've still got that fire, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I, I uh, didn't seem like I, you know, lost anything there over the, the time that I was sick. Uh, everything's going fine. It didn't qualify too well, but we're going to try to finish, make up for that in the finish today. This Hendrick team, with all its race cars and all its sponsorship, couldn't win a race until you came back. You've given them two in a row. What kind of magic do you have, anyway? <laughs> well, the magic I have is uh, two guys named Rick Hendrick and Harry Hyde uh, and all the guys on the Folgers team. Uh, they, you know, you're only as good as equipment you drive, and they give me the best equipment, so you ought to have the best finishing position. Quickly, how come you're starting way back here, anyway? Well, I damn near crashed through and qualifying up here like that. I had them wonder. They thought I was hitting the fence, and I just missed it, and still ended up this far up we, but luckily didn't dent anything so that's one of the reasons Tim Richmond looking for his third straight win will come from 18th starting spot Ken among the other stories here today is Davey Allison a rookie who has won two in his freshman season they say that hasn't been done before but actually back in 1959 there was a guy who loved this sport as much as life itself won two and went on to win 48 more our colleague, two-time Grand National Champion, Ned Jarrett. You know, I don't think they put as much emphasis on records back then as they do today. But definitely, Davey Allison has led a youth charge in this sport. The age of the early 30s is relatively young for athletes in this phase of auto racing. In fact, in this field today, 20 of the 41 drivers are 32 or less. It hasn't been too long ago that we saw Darrell Waltrip and Neil Bonnet, who are 40 today, challenging the veterans of K.O. Yarborough, Richard Petty, and Bobby Allison, who are all in their late 40s. 
Now, we're not going to say that those veterans are ready to roll over and play dead by any means because they have been a factor in almost every race and will be again here today. But of the six different winners on the circuit so far this year, five of those drivers are 32 or younger. Only Dale Earnhardt, who is the biggest winner, has uh, is over 32, and he's just 35. But Davey Allison certainly is to be envied for the record that he's setting so far this year, and he has the honor today of starting in the fourth row alongside of his famous dad, Bobby Allison. Let's meet him now with Mike Joy. It's young fellows like this in NASCAR racing that are making older experienced drivers reach for the bromides and the headache powders these days. Davey Allison, two wins so far. Are you ready to put some of these older fellows out of the driving seats and into the rocking chairs, it looks like? Well, Mike, we've been doing the best we can, but there's a lot of other younger guys out here that are that are trying to do the same thing, but some of these older guys object to it. But nobody over 35 has won a race this year. I think it's just a matter of time before either my dad or, or one of the other guys pulls one off, though. Uh, they've been running really good and they've had a lot of bad luck, but we're going to try to prevent it if we can. Well, one side of the times is the fellow across the fourth row, Davy's dad, Bobby Allison. They used to say, hey, there goes NASCAR's third all-time winner. And now a lot of people say, hey, there goes Davey Allison's dad. Stand by for the action, the excitement of NASCAR stock car racing, CBS style, live from Michigan in a moment. Paul, for the first time in his Winston Cup career, he's standing by with Dave Despain. Rusty Wallace has also given Pontiac its first pole since 1983. How does it feel to sit at the head of the class? Feels better than I thought it would, Dave. I tell you, I'm real proud to put a Pontiac up front, and just hope that I can keep it up front. The car's been running great all weekend, and the engine problem seems to be gone right now, so let's just hope for the best. These guys have a streak of their own. They're hoping to break here today. They've blown motors in three straight races. They've changed the lubrication system to solve that problem. For the dramatic story of the outside pole, let's go to Mike Joy. Derek Cope's previous best start, 15th at Riverside. He qualified on the outside pole here, and what happened yesterday afternoon? Well, we went out to the last practice session, and we uh, were really pleased with the race car. It was running awful fast. I ran with uh, Tim Richmond and Davey Allison and stayed right there. So we were really, com you know, really completely done with the car. And I shut it off clean on the back chute, and it made a, uh, a popping noise, but I thought it was a header leak. And we come in and uh, took all the, you know, the check and the, the stuff this morning and started trying to fire the car again. It would not start. And evidently, the motor started to run backwards and uh, either broke the camshaft or broke uh, timing chain or something, and we just had no time to change the motor, so we were going to have to scratch the The high point of your career yesterday, and now you feel? Well, we're, we're bitterly disappointed, you know, but, you know, we're still, you know, grateful for the fact that we did do it. We know we're capable of doing it, and we know that we can come back here or another place and, and do the same thing, so we're confident from that level. And they have a lot to look forward to. Ken? Unfortunate time for Derek Cope. We're just about ready for the command to fire engine. Miss Nancy Hales will be commanding these 41 cars to life. They qualified within about two and a half seconds of each other. One provisional starter in the field. Let's go down for that command. The time has come. We've been waiting for those four famous words. And here to give that command is Nancy Hales, marketing coordinator for 7-Eleven food stores from Saginaw, Michigan. Nancy? Gentlemen, start your engine! <laughs> It's in car camera, one of three. Kyle Petty's in car camera, the second. And the king, Richard Petty, has our third onboard camera for the Michigan 400 live today here on CBS Sports. Every year, Michigan has given us one of our most competitive events. We expect the same this afternoon. I'll be back with a starting grid in just a moment. Annual Michigan 400. On the pole for the first time in his career, the Pontiac of Missouri's Rusty Wallace. And for the first time ever in the front row from Spokane, Washington, the Ford of Derek Cope. In row two, it's the 84, 85, and 86 Michigan 400 winner Bill Elliott and Fenton, Missouri's Ken Schrader. Row three, two-time Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt and the 84 Winston Cup champ, Texas Terry Labonte. Row four, the rookie Davey Allison and outside his father, Bobby Allison. Row five, it's car five, Jeff Bodine and the 79 winner, Buddy Baker. Row six from Bartow, Florida, Rick Wilson and 
Bobby Hillen Jr. of Midland, Texas. In row seven, a 70-time winner, Darrell Waltrip, still looking for his first win in this event. And beside him is Phil Parsons. Row eight, Owensboro, Kentucky's Mike Waltrip. And starting 16th, the Pontiac of the 1974 winner, Richard Petty. Row nine, Ricky Rudd in the Bud Moore Ford and Tim Richmond on the comeback trail going for three in a row. Row 10, it's Harry Gant from North Carolina and Alan Kowicki of Wisconsin. Row 11, the 1980 winner, Benny Parsons and Morgan Shepard. In row 12, it's Greg Sachs and Kyle Petty, the winner of the Charlotte 600 earlier this year. Row 13, six-time Michigan 400 champion, Cale Yarborough and Brett Bodine. Row 14, from Tennessee, Connie Saylor and Wisconsin's Jim Sauter. Row 15, Jackson, Mississippi's Lake Speed and Wausau, Wisconsin's Dave Marcus. Row 16, H.B. Bailey of Houston, Texas and Michigan's Don Paul. For row 17, also out of Alabama, comes Neil Bonnet and flanking him is Buddy Arrington of Martinsville, Virginia. Row 18, Kenny Bouchard from Pittsburgh, Massachusetts and Eddie Beerswale of San Antonio, Texas. Row 19, Dale Jarrett of Hickory, North Carolina, and Michigan's Butch Miller. Row 20, Rodney Combs from Lost Creek, West Virginia, and Dave Simcoe from Michigan. And rounding out the field, provisional starter Sterling Marlin of Columbia, Tennessee. A tremendous wave from the crowd as Harold Kinder indicates one lap, and they will be racing live on CBS this afternoon. Ken Schrader has now pulled up into the front row, assuming the position that Derek Cope had qualified for. Onboard cameras in three cars today, and the king is back. Richard Petty, car number 43, has been out for two races after he crashed at Dover, Delaware, and broke a couple of ribs. Richard Petty, Ken Squire at CBS Control. Do you read us? Yes, sir. Ken, we're right here. How do you feel? Well, right now, I feel real good. I talked to him a little bit like we're running something. <laughs> okay. Any soreness at all? Ah, uh, well, yeah, I'm still sore, but I feel like this flat track, we don't get that G-force, should be okay. Richard, uh, your doctor down there, I understand, told you that you're getting older. You don't do things as well as you used to. You only broke two this time. That, that's what he said. He said, most time I break four or five, so I'm doing better. Okay. Good luck to you this afternoon, sir. And he doesn't heal quite as quick as he used to either, uh, Ken, because he'll be 50 years old next week. July the 2nd. Let's take a look at the course itself. It's two miles, tri-oval. It is a beautiful D-shaped track, very similar to Daytona in layout, except a half mile shy. 18 degree turns instead of 31 degrees in one and two, three and four, and 12 degrees down the front straightaway and just enough to kind of run the water off the back straightaway, five degrees there. And yesterday, Sterling Marlin, the reason he is 41st is he crashed warming up to start the uh, qualifying run here in turn three. The wind was terrible, and the wind isn't much fun today. The parachute is bringing the American flag in, missed the entire track, landed off the second corner. Pace car is about to come in, ladies and gentlemen. The Michigan 400 on CBS, ready for a start. Harold Kinder holds him down. Green is out, we're racing. On the break, Rusty Wallace jumps out in front of his first pole position. I asked his crew chief, one of the crew members, Ken Hammond, about getting that ball. I said, do you remember the last time you were on the pole? He said, I think it was back when they ran steam engines. Here he is pumping into turn number two with a two-car length advantage as 40 cars break away. 41 qualified with a provisional starter. 40 start. The man on the outside of the front row, Derek Koch, breaking an engine this morning. How discouraging for that team from Spokane, Washington. From inside, Richard Petty's car. There you see Bobby Hillen directly in front of him, and down on the inside, Phil Parsons. Neil Bonnet is gunning through cars. Here he is up on late speed and trying the inside at turn three. Just finds the hole. Inches along, three wide there, as they come by the grandstand for the first time. Sold out here in Michigan. Capacity house. Sterling Marlin, number 44 who started dead last, he's on the move, whipping through cars, has already passed six or seven, he's up on Buddy Arrington in turn number one. Marlin at number 44, down to the bottom of the racetrack, clipping off another. Lost the whole front end off that car. There's Rusty Wallace in front. Ken Schrader's number 90 is in second. Here comes Earnhardt, busting around, getting down to the inside and taking position. Coming by to complete lap number two of 200. 
It hasn't taken Bill Elliott too long to catch back up. He lost about a second there on the start, the first lap again, but he has moved right back up on the second place car, Ken Schrader. And the fourth place car, number 11, that's Terry Labonte. Junior Johnson celebrating his 56th birthday today. Understand Flossie is fishing for trout right now instead of watching to make sure that she has what Junior wants for dinner when he gets home tonight in Ronda, North Carolina. Here's Rusty Wallace, the great Midwest star. With the success that Bill Elliott has had here on this track, of course, he has run forwards all of his career. It has to make Rusty Wallace feel good knowing that this is, has been somewhat of a forward track, but yet he's out front and uh, actually a couple of car lengths. Wallace coming around to complete another lap. Let's check in on Neil Bonnet riding right behind Lake Speed, who's made two runs this year and had a second to third. Bonnet getting a challenge here bending him off as he is rolling up through the field. Neil Bonnet carrying one of our onboard cameras today starting in the 33rd position. And there you see Dave Marcus just shooting underneath him. And now he's trying to pull back up on the veteran from Wausau, Wisconsin. Just moving that wheel ever so tenderly at about 170 miles an hour. And using the, very, the draft very effectively as he moved around Dave Marcus on the outside. Of course, Neil Bonnet knows how to use the draft, and they use a lot of it here on this two-mile track. Inside Richard Petty's automobile, distance here. That car has not run well in traffic at all this season. And remember, he's driving with two busted ribs. Gives it a little space as they come by. He is now running in 11th, just behind the front 10 cars. You can see those plates holding up that windshield, and you need them here, Ned. Yes, you do. There's a lot of pressure on the windshields at the speeds that they run here because they'll reach approximately 185, maybe 188 miles an hour on the straightaway here. And, of course, he has a shade on the right side of his windshield as well, and that helps his vision, especially when the sun's out. However, right now, that would be no major problem for him. We have a slight overcast here. Of course, he always wears dark glasses. Too. That makes yeah. The field coming by. Down with five laps complete. Wallace first, Schrader second, Elliott third, Earnhardt up into fourth. Earnhardt's on a roll this year, won six of the first eight races, and then by the time the World 600 came around and Kyle Petty won, we've seen some different faces up in front. Six different drivers have won thus far this year. Into the back straightaway. Down into that five-degree banking. And here he is, up to about 175 miles per hour, Dale Earnhardt, defending Winston Cup champion. He felt he had a good shot at winning the pole, but they draw for qualifying positions. He drew the very last position. Of course, the, the weather, the temperatures had gotten hotter, and that uh, he felt held him back a little bit, even though he still qualified. And the track was very difficult. Sandy and all kinds of fun. There is Sterling Marlin still whipping through cars from dead last in the field. The blue and white car on the outside is number 44. That's Marlin on the move and coming up through traffic. And Ken, we have to report that Cale Yarborough is smoking in his car number 29. Cale blew an engine in his car late yesterday in the very last lap of practice. He told me this morning, here's a pass for second place as Bill Elliott makes the move. He'll head up towards Rusty Wallace. But anyway, Cale Yarborough had to put in a new engine this morning. He was apprehensive about it. He said, I don't like to put a new engine in on race morning, not have a chance to run it, but he has smoke coming from it now. Elliott going for four in a row. Closes our leader, Rusty Wallace in the Pontiac. Last time Pontiac started from the point, 1983, Atlanta, Georgia. It was the same team of Raymond Beetle. Tim Richmond was then at the keyboard. It is the first time that crew chief Barry Dotson has put a car on the pole for a Winston Cup event. Now here's Dale Earnhardt in the blue and yellow, number three, closing on Schrader and number nine. Here is Petty. Diving underneath Jeff Bodine at 170 miles an hour, ready to rub fenders. Getting awfully close. If you're not willing to trade sheet metal at 170 miles an hour, there's always tennis. But Bodine is not ready yet for him to make the pass, so he pulls back past. And here comes Darrell Waltrip on the outside, so that little maneuver cost Richard Petty a position. And here comes Waltrip trying to slither down to the inside as they come to the 12 degree banking. Waltrip on a roll pulls up on Bodine. Two of the Rick Hendrick cars running side by side further back in the field here. Waltrip does successfully make the move going into the turn, but he goes high. Now Bodine will try to go down to the inside, and here's the car of Cale Yarbrough that we mentioned had been smoking. I suppose we'll see Cale coming into the pits before too long. He seems to be running well, Ken, but the smoke coming from him could be just an oil leak or something, and that happens sometimes when they change engines. He's moving up on Benny Parsons now to move on the inside, so certainly that smoke is not affecting his speed. Was oh, that the valve cover or something? Could be. 
There's Alan Kowicki in the number seven going around Kyle Petty. In the Yarborough pit is Dave Despain. The problem with Dale Yarborough's car has still not been diagnosed. NASCAR officials are concerned about it. They've asked the crew chief, Cliff Champion, to check with Kale on the radio and see if they have diagnosed it. They're concerned about the possibility of oil on the racetrack. That conference continues. Cliff Champion called Kale on the radio. Kale said, well, it must be a tire. I don't see any smoke in the car. I don't smell any smoke inside. Cliff, any idea what the problem is? Well, we really got a tire rubbing just a little bit. I think he bumped somebody back there getting in the start and he got a little close back there he must have bumped the fender on the tire a little bit it's not bad will you try to keep him out there then we're going to try and keep him out unless kale feels that it's rubbing bad enough he's going to come in you know we don't want to keep him out there if it's unsafe definitely not oil though you think it's tire for sure i don't believe it is you know, it's hard to say we we messed the motor up yesterday and had to change the motor first thing this morning they might have got a little bit too much oil in there or something like that it's only leaking in the corner so it could be short a little bit of oil after three so the speculation here is tire. They're going to leave Kale out and see if the problem works. Ken? As he dives into the corner, you can see that smoke begin to billow out from beneath the car. There you see that scramble up in front and now further back. There is Kale Yarbrough's car and leading that group is Benny Parsons in the 35. Those cars not up in the front 12, 13 positions. Morgan Shepard in the green and white car. Kyle Petty coming after him. And here comes the battle for the lead. Wallace, the white and green car, being challenged by Bill Elliott for first place as they work lap number 12. Tim Richmond now up into the 11th position. Jeff Bodine in 12th, Richard Petty 13th, Bobby Hill in 14th, Mike Waltrip who qualified well in 15th. The leaders separating from the field, big interval between the number two car and the number three car. Call that a second and a quarter. Here's your third place car, Schrader, in the Junie Don Levy car. A lot of spring sponsors you see in racing. That number 90 is one of the more unique pizza outfit. Up in first place, number 27, Rusty Wallace. Comes by taking another lap. And of course, they get a bonus of five points for leading the most laps. Wallace very much in contention in the Winston Cup standings. Trying to stay there. Now here comes number nine driving to the inside as we look further back at the field. The scramble is on. The number 33 car of Harry Gant trying to go under. Morgan Shepard. Gant in number 33 trying to move up and at well, the, the moment stalemated. Now that's 55. And Dan right behind the car 55. They're both uh, sponsored by the same company. Morgan Shepard has had his share of problems in the last several weeks. For the moment, drawing away, running in the 21st position. Back with the leader. Wallace in this beautifully prepared number 27 Pontiac. 29 is in the pits. Kale coming in. So apparently there's more to that oil or the smoke than we first anticipated as Kale brings his car number 29 into the pits. We have cost the pit stop for it here in the green. Here's Dave Despain. As Kale Yarbrough comes on pit road, they immediately go under the hood trying to diagnose the problem. They'll give him routine service while he's in, but the real key here is to figure out where that smoke is coming from. We can see the smoke coming from underneath the car. They are not doing any work on the tires, so it is apparently uh, some lubrication difficulty. They have checked the car over. They're buttoning it back up, and they look like they want to get him back out just as quickly as possible. Kale is going back out. There was no apparent done on the car. They simply look for the problem, and we'll get Cliff Champion here in a moment and see if we can find out what they might have discovered here. Now the conference back underway with the NASCAR officials. Dave Despain. To determine what to do next. David, uh, a report uh, from one of the drivers out there. I think Harry Gant called back to his pits and said he thought it was the rear end that was uh, burning up on that car. Apparently he was running behind Kale and got some of the grease that was coming from him causing that smoke. And Kim, we've had a lead change. Indeed. Bill Elliott seeking that fourth straight win in this tremendous event of $495,000 worth is leading and pulling away by some 15 car lengths. Over Wallace in second, Schrader in third, Earnhardt fourth, Bobby Allison fifth, Terry Labonte is in sixth. And then comes Rick Wilson. Now Wilson is moving around Terry Labonte. Wilson up a spot in the sixth, and here comes Tim Richmond in the seventh. Back straight away, fight for third here. Ken Schrader goes up against Dale Earnhardt. We'll return with more live action coverage of the Michigan 400 after this message and a word from your local station.
for running. It was Elliott in front. Rusty Wallace then in second. Ken Schrader was in third. Dale Earnhardt in fourth. Bobby Allison was in fifth. He is just pitted with a tire situation, apparently. And Rick Wilson in sixth. Tim Richmond in seventh. Baker eighth. Labonte ninth. And Walter tenth. And Bobby Allison had more than a tire problem. They changed all four tires on his car, but it will not crank. He's, they're pushing him down pit road. He has already gone two laps down to the leader. A very tough right here for Bobby Allison. And Dave Despain has the story. It was a painfully long pit stop for Bobby Allison. They had a tire problem. They came in. They weren't sure where the problem was. Changed all four in good time. Difficult to do under green. They were in bad shape at that point, but they became much worse off when the car died in the pits, and it took a long push down pit road to get it back underway. A double-edged problem here for Bobby Allison. Ken? Two-time winner of this event. 82 times a winner in Winston Cup races. His 44th performance here at Michigan. Driven just about everything here from Indianapolis cars on. International race of champions and stock cars out of it today. Here are the leaders and Wallace has closed down on the leader, Bill Elliott. Rusty Wallace in the white and green number 27 Pontiac moves in on the Ford of Bill Elliott. Third is Earnhardt. Fourth is Schrader. Up to fifth moves Tim Richmond. He is on a roll here this afternoon, Ned, having started 18th. He said that he messed up a little bit qualifying, got the car a little bit loose, said the car was capable of running faster than he qualified it, so he's showing right now that it very definitely was as he moves up through the field. Running in six is Wilson, seventh is Waltrip, eighth is Baker, ninth is Petty, tenth is Labonte, eleventh Davy Allison, twelfth Benny Parson, thirteenth Bodine, fourteenth Rocky Run, and fifteenth Bobby Hillen. There's the speed off turn four. As you notice, they run down from the wall. They never get as flush to it as they do at Daytona or Talladega. That can bother you a little. If you have a tire start to deflate, it will hook you into the wall. Back to Dave Despain. The, the problem that brought Bobby Allison or caused Bobby Allison's engine to die on that last pit stop has reoccurred. Now there is a fire under the hood. One of the crewmen has burned his hand. It's obviously the carburetor. The difficulty caused the engine to die during the previous pit stop. They got it started. He went back out. Obviously, the car was still not running right. They brought it back on pit road as they went under the hood. They took the air cleaner apart, took it off. Fire erupted. One crewman may have burned his hand. Then once they cleared the air cleaner, he was able to get back out onto the racetrack. Dan, what do you think about that? Well, he went out without the cleaner, according to our observation here, and they're not supposed to race without an air cleaner on the car. However, maybe they don't have one in the pits, and they'll run to the garage and get one and come back and put it on later. Averaging 166.6 miles an hour. There you see the leaders. Elliott, then in second, Wallace, and here you see in third, Dale Earnhardt and Ken Schrader maintaining fourth, and Earnhardt trying to collect those two guys just in front of him. Richard Petty's car number 43 chasing Buddy Baker in the 88. That is the battle for eighth position. <laughs> Looks like Tarkinian in basketball. That's the in Las ball. Vegas seeing an NCAA contest here on CBS today. The trademark of Richard Petty, as Ned points out. Let's, let's check from father to son. No towel there. And cool and just, just driving along is nice and easy there just like he's on a sunday afternoon drive he is in 16th position kyle petty winner of the charlotte 600 earlier this year kyle petty easing along only uh, what 14 cars finished in charlotte and his father said he did not drive them he just wore them out in that charlotte race and there's a problem on the car number 11 of terry labonte one of the favorites in this race he slowed as he went down the back stretch again we'll see him coming into the pits here very shortly indeed he's on the apron at turn three as the leaders approach turn number one there is terry labonte former winston cup champion like he did before headed into the pits Waiting for that story to unfold here on Terry Labonte from Corpus Christi, Texas. Meanwhile, Bill Elliott, awesome Bill from Dawsonville, is just that right now into the back straightaway. Here's Labonte on pit road, right side rubber being changed, nothing going up on Terry Labonte's car number 11. Junior Johnson has had his share of victories on this track. And Terry like, Labonte's going to lap down. On Bobby Allison's car, they changed the four tires before he had his other problem, and they're changing four tires on Terry Labonte's car. Sometimes when they do that, Ken, they have a vibration in the car. A tire might equalize, and they don't know which tire it is. Let's go to Dave to space for the story. As Labonte leaves the pits, we see a little bit of smoke from the automobile. Junior, 
Junior Johnson. You know what the problem was, Junior? Kind of burst his gear or something. I'm sorry, broken gear? Left rear axle broken. He says the left rear axle on the car may be broken. That's what brought him in. They changed all four tires on the car, sent him back out, but they fear a drivetrain problem that would probably be terminal. Ken? Junior Johnson, whose cars have won twice here in 1977 and 78. And while we're also seeing Cale Yarborough, the six-time winner of this event, winning in 77 and 78 for, for Junior, now with his own team back on pit road. And, and this is his third pit stop on green flag. Ken, the hood goes up again on the car. He was black flagged by NASCAR officials for the smoke that's coming from the car and the smoke apparently coming from either grease or oil that's leaking. Kelly Yarborough resting on pit road. Here's Dave. He can give us the story. They have an oil leak on the Yarborough car up under the left front fender. It's directly in front of Kale. We thought it might be coming from the rear end. Some of the drivers were reporting that they were getting what they saw was rear end grease on their windshield. However, the leak is just in front of Kale under the left front fender. They stopped the first time and stuffed a bunch of grease rags up around it to try to check the flow of oil. Now they are having to go in after the black flag and make a full repair. They have an oil drain pan there. They have loosened the oil line, and it'll take a while to get this one fixed. They tried to patch it. That didn't work. So now under black flag, they'll have to fix it right. Ken? Kelly Arbro's had great success in racing, but this year the challenge of owning his own team has added to his racing pressures. Well, it's, it's been hard, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's been quite expensive and uh, a lot more work, but uh, as far as regrets, I don't have any, any regrets. I, uh, it, this is something that I've planned to do for a long time, and I'm glad I did it when I did it. He may want to rethink that after a while. I'll tell you, after days like this, it certainly would make you have second thoughts. Of course, he's looking down the road, Ken, one day to retire as a driver himself and put a younger driver in it, although he says he is not ready to hang up the helmet yet. Going back to the leaders in traffic, there you see Elliott in the number nine, making a move on car number 64, skirting around that car that started back in 39th, Rodney Combs of Lost Creek, West Virginia. And Rusty Wallace stays right there, hanging on in second. Wallace, the Fenton, Missouri driver, having a tremendous run. More from Michigan shortly. Arriving with the King, Richard Petty, 200-time winner in a tremendous fight. He's been side-by-side -side with Buddy Baker in the number 88 for the last three laps. Baker has just pulled by and drawn with him number 35, Benny Parsons. So as they run now, Baker's in eight, Parsons in ninth, Richard Petty's in tenth, and right behind him is Davey Allison in 11th. They're in turn one. Baker in the blue and white car on the outside, number 88, and there's Parsons dipping low, trying to move in. The teammate, the number 25 of Tim Richmond, is up in fourth position now. Look at this scramble in turn three. Baker just barely in front. Here's Parsons in the 35, trying the inside as they battle for eighth position. And trouble as H.B. Bailey slams the wall. H.B. Bailey out of Texas. Over in turn two, or between turn one and two. Has wailed. You can see the tire marks slapping the wall, spinning around. It is the first caution of the day. It comes at lap 33. H.B. Bailey's car lies stricken in turn number two after it solidly rams the concrete. Caution out. Racing back to the line. Scary to see them flush into the wall up there. Yes, it is, although he's uh, a little higher than their groove at this point of the race. Fortunately, it stayed on the high side of the track rather than coming back down in front of the traffic. Now he gets it down off of the traffic, uh, off of the wall as the traffic goes by, and here comes the leaders into the pit. Backed it in. You think of last year here on this track. Well, Rick Baldwin qualifying slammed into the wall, and Rick is uh, still in a comatose position in Texas. Here's Mike Joy. Getting scheduled service here, right side tires going on that Ford. NASCAR's allowing an extra man over the wall on pit stop to collect the tires taken off the right side, carry them back over the wall so they can't get punted back out into traffic. Like most of the teams at this end of pit road, Elliott will take on four tires. And look at this thread. These tires are already scuffed. They have four or five laps on them in yesterday's practice and allow them to heat up and cool down and set to go on the car today. They're not using brand new sticker tires. There's Ricky Rudd also getting service. Let's go to Dave Despain. 
This, this caution is a break for Terry Labonte. They had planned to come in in just a lap or two to change the broken rear axle we mentioned on the previous report. Now they are able to make that change under a yellow flag condition. Now the car has been pulled off pit road so it doesn't create a traffic problem for the rest of the field. They are hard at work now pulling the wheel off. It'll take four or five laps to get this done, but at least they are able to do it under yellow and lose less distance on the racetrack than if they had to make the change under green as planned. Ken? Well, here you see number 36 limping along back, wobbling toward the garage area. Number 36, H.B. Bailey, who backed into the wall in turn two. Never says anything that takes longer than five seconds and usually ends up with, know what I mean? H.B. Bailey, goatee and all. Number 36, down about turn two now. And it'll be a short day for him, ending in lap 33. Rest of the field coming on pit road. Kelly Yarborough taking another opportunity here to drop by and have his car worked upon. As car number 25, Tim Richmond has also come in twice. Richmond making a great run, starting 18th, coming to fourth. And here you see the Junior Johnson car being administrated to by Tim Brewer, now total crew chief as Jeff Hammond has moved on to his old pal, Darrell Waltrip. Let's talk to Richard Petty in car number 43. Richard, Ken Squire at CBS Control. How are things going out there? I found a place yet. I'm working on I believe he's talking to Dale Inman, his, his uh, crew chief. And what he was saying, he hadn't found a place yet. He's working on it. Apparently, he hasn't found the right spot on the racetrack that he wants that car to go. So he's in contact with Dale Inman, his cousin, and the crew chief on this car. A lot of that crew anxiously awaiting the outcome of this race with Wade Thornburg and Richie Byers and those people that have really constructed this team up to a position to be a real challenger this year. Richard Petty, Ken Squire again at the CBS Control. Good start. And just before that caution came out, we saw Buddy Baker take a run at you. I don't believe he's reading this at this point. Apparently not. Uh, planning his strategy right now. One lap, and they will be back under green. A lap, and they'll be back under green at 35 complete. He has uh, both right side tires flat on that car, the H.B. Bailey car, so Ken, it's possible that's what caused him to get into the wall. Maybe a tire blew as he went into the turn and slammed him into the wall, but it looks like it will be all for H.B. Bailey today. Car glancing off turn two in sad disarray as it goes back to the garage area, and they continue to work on Terry Labonte's car as Neil Bonnet takes a moment to pit here just before we come back under green. Davy Allison also dives back on pit road, and now you're inside of Bonnet's car. Neil Bonnet had stayed on the racetrack. He is currently in third place in the Western Cup point standings. He stayed out there to lead a lap so that he would get those five bonus points. It's going to cost him some space on the racetrack. He'll be way back in the back, but he figures those five bonus points are worth it. Benny Parsons from 21st to 9th today. He's having a good run. Here's Mike Joy. And here's H.B. Bailey disgruntled. Right side tires are flat, but most of the damage is to the left. What happened? Oh, I just went in a little low with the car was loose, and I went in a little low trying to pass 89, going in the one, and just lost it. Gonna make it a long ride back to Texas. Yes, yeah, sir, it does. It wasn't nobody's fault but my own. I can't blame it on nobody. All right, sorry to see you out of it. All right, thank you. H.B. Bailey, out of Texas. Liked by everyone on the field. They like to have him out there. Unfortunate that he brings out a caution flag in the early going. He's been around for a long time, and uh, he is a super nice guy, very quiet, doesn't bother anybody, just likes to race. As they prepare for a restart, we see Ken Schrader on the point, Allison on the inside as a lap car, lap cars in the bottom of the racetrack, cars in the lead lap on the outside as they get ready to take green another time. HB had a terrible crash years ago, rammed the wall head on, thought he'd broken some ribs and he stumbled back into the pits into Barry Dotson's pits and just fell down there and Barry says what's wrong he said, hit the wall can't breathe know what I mean yeah. Barry says I understand but you can't stay here we're going to pit right now okay ready to go racing again Neil Bonnet coming out of the back of this group and there's Davey Allison just in front of him as they come down by this sold out capacity house and nearly sold out the grandstand yesterday for qualifying. It's been a tremendous weekend here at this two mile Michigan International Speedway. Up through traffic, dotting, charging. Here he is sliding down into turn number one. Bonnet just knocking him down like bowling pins as he gets the restart. 
Goes up under the number 91 car of Kenny Bouchard. Rides right along with him. Meanwhile, up in front, it is Earnhardt busting out into the lead. There's Rick Wilson in second in the yellow, number four on the inside. Bobby Allison had tried to get one of his laps back, but he couldn't hang on, so he's being shuffled back in the pack now as Earnhardt gets those five bonus points for the first time today. Trainers in third, Wallace in fourth as they go back into turn number one. And here's Terry Labonte's number 11 just exiting pit road. 39 complete, race restarted at 38. Richard Petty in number 43. Middle of the track, Bobby Hillen from Midland, Texas, dives underneath him in the number eight car. And they're inches away at 175 miles an hour. Neil Bonnet still ripping through the field from dead last. Eddie Beerswall is coming up on the car number 77. He but gets around Arrington. Here comes Bonnet. They're back in turn three now. Bonnet finds a hole on the inside. Pulls the log. Says bye-bye to Texas Eddie Beerswale. 12 degree trioval area of this D-shaped two mile track as Bonnet continues to unlimber the Raymock number 75 back with Richard Petty at number 43. Shown as seventh on the restart. Bobby Hillen has just moved underneath him and up in front of him is Buddy Baker in the 88. Rick Wilson, who is currently running in second place, has run good in almost every race this season, Ken, but he's had trouble running the full distance. The late Leroy Yarbrough had a saying that, uh, say, to finish first, first you have to finish. So Wilson has been running at the finish only three times this year, but it's looking good for a good run here today. Went back to the first race here with Cale and Leroy right to the finish, the last lap. Remember, Leroy went in the wall down here in turn number one. Cale went on to win it. Great memories of this track. That was the first of his six. Here's Earnhardt working the backside, and Rick Wilson of Bartow, Florida, in the number four car, staying right with him now. As they sort him out, Wilson in that second spot, Schrader in third, Wallace in fourth, Elliott settled into fifth for the moment. There's Schrader in the number 90, car out of Virginia. 41 starters, if you're just joining us today. And among the early incidents, we've seen a problem on Kelly Yarborough's car and on Allison's car and Lamonti's car. First caution of the day, out for H.B. Bailey. Neil Bonnet has nailed two more as he continues to charge from the rear. Well, he's going by a familiar name there, Ken. Yes, indeed he is. That's a guy named Jarrett in that 18 <laughs> car, the Friedlander car. Your son uh, made the field, and there was about a dozen that didn't just to get into this race was something of an expedition. There is so much competition on this circuit today, and so many cars trying to get into every field. It is an accomplishment just to get into the field, even though he started 37th, but I've been watching him out of the corner of one eye every once in a while, and he's doing a good job out there, Ken. How do you think of these rookie kids wearing mustaches? Well, uh, now, we weren't allowed to do that back when I was racing by our parents. By your parents. <laughs> Just have no control, do you? No. Here's Cale Yarborough. Consultation flag is out again on that car, and here's Dave. The frustrations continue for Cale Yarborough. This looks like a videotape replay of the previous stop. They came in this time. They took off some of the oil rags that they had put around the oil leak to try to stop it. Apparently, the oil rags themselves have become soaked. They were uh, contributing to the smoke flow from the automobile. Let's see if we can get Cliff Champion and perhaps determine whether or not they've actually solved the problem here. Cliff is still in conference with the NASCAR officials. Cliff, do you know if you've got it fixed now? Do you know if you have it fixed now? Yes, it's... The oil engine's blowing a little oil out the breathers right now. Don't you think you got it up? Do you think you have it under control so you can keep it from being black flagged? Well, I don't know. We took some of the oil out of it, and this last time we took some of the breathers out of it. We, we had a restrictor in the breather. We took that out, maybe trying some of the blow-by. Do you start worried about the motor living now with all the changes in the oiling system? No, it's... The oil system is doing fine. It's, for some reason, it's just blowing a little extra oil out right now. So they continue to have an oiling problem here. They hope they've got it solved and can keep Kale out on the racetrack. He's had to stop twice for black flags. Dale Earnhardt trying to put Chevrolet in victory lane for the fourth time in this Michigan 400. He's leading right now. More in a moment. Speedway with Ned Jarrett. I'm Ken Squire. As we look at the Budweiser leaderboard to the moment, Dale Earnhardt has the advantage by two and one-tenth seconds over Florida's Rick Wilson, 
followed by Missouri's Ken Schrader third, Georgia's Bill Elliott fourth, and Rusty Wallace is in fifth. Taking a look at the second five, Buddy Baker having an outstanding run in the early going is sixth. Bobby Hillen is seventh, Richard Petty eighth, Darrell Waltrip ninth, and Ricky Rudd is in the tenth position. Down the main straightaway. We got a real struggle beginning to develop for second place as we see Earnhardt in front. And here's that battle for second. Bill Elliott on the bottom of the racetrack. He's back up to that runner-up spot. Trying to close in on Earnhardt now as Rick Wilson falls to third. This is happening at lap 48. Dale Earnhardt, who has won some $5,600,000 racing these cars in the past 10 years with the advantage now. He's never won this race, was second here in 1984. And look at that interval between Earnhardt in the Chevrolet and the Ford Thunderbird of Bill Elliott. Dale Earnhardt has won six of the first eight races this year, but recently a victory down has caught up with that team. This week, Dale sees an improved forecast. You know, you can be on top of the world, and uh, like we were at the first part of the season, nothing went wrong. Uh, the last part here, the last several races, a little flat tire here, a little uh, engine problem there. Just little things that happened and kept us out of the winning circle, but uh, we still finished well. So uh, if we can just hold on here and get back in the groove and win some races, uh, I think the luck will turn back around for us. Outside of his second place spot, it's been sixes and fifths in this race. Still looking for the first one to fall his way. Currently leading in the Winston Cup standings as they move to the Firecracker 400 in Daytona Beach. And if he leads the points there and is expected to, he'll get a $150,000 bonus. Well, I never won that much in a season. In fact, barely won half that much in a season. Don't you wish you could back it up, Ned? It would be nice. Four and 30 years too soon, I guess. Bill Elliott in second. Glenn doesn't think so. He didn't oh. fail. And running in third is Rick Wilson. Fourth is Schrader. Fifth is Rusty Wallace. Ned Jarrett alongside, whose two sons are part of this great sport. Let's go to Dave Despain with Kelly Arborough. As the work continues on the number 29 car, the owner and the driver sits here in frustration. Kale, what was your first sign of a problem? Well, we, uh, as soon as the race started, I knew I could see some smoke and smell some smoke coming, but, you know, we really don't know what it is. Um, yesterday afternoon, we blew, a, blew an engine the last lap of practice. We ran out of gas and burned a piston. But uh, the engine's running fine. Everything's going real good. It's just a baffle or something that's... This messed up and it's pulling back through the breather, but everything's running fine. It's just smoking. Bulldog determination has always been one of your uh, one of your strong suits. That's going to prevail as a car owner too. You're going to whip. Stay after this thing till you whip it, aren't you? Uh, we're going to stay with it. We aren't going to let it whip us. We just we're out for the day as far as the running, but we're going to try to fix it so we can find out what's wrong with it and, and get back out. That's Kale Yarborough. As long as he's been driving these things, he has never ever quit, and they are not quitting now. They continue to try to. Plug up this oil leak and get him back out onto the racetrack. Jim? Dale Earnhardt continues to do the Michigan toodaloo. He now leads by four seconds over Elliott as the Richard Childress team has put that car out in front by a healthy margin. Now from the Richard Petty car, you're looking at Rusty Wallace in the number 27 in sixth position. Richard is in seventh, and there's Ken Schrader in the number 90, the red and white car on the outside. They're in turn three. And just a moment ago, those two cars got together, Kenny Schrader and Rusty Wallace, their neighbors from Missouri, but they touched just momentarily, but everything was okay. There you see the second place man, Elliot, at number nine. And remember, if you're just joining us, he is striving for four straight wins in this event. This is where it all began for him. He'd actually won Riverside the year before, but his first super speedway win was here. A timid, quiet young man from Dawsonville, Georgia, who then went on to become truly awesome. Won a million dollar bonus a couple of years ago, and now wherever he goes, he's considered a major contender to come home with a checkered flag. Interval between first and second place as they come to the line this time before this capacity house sold out in Michigan. Officials say they expect this to be the biggest crowd ever here with an infield that is just outstanding five and four tenths of a second as Earnhardt, relentless as he always is, just continues to pour it on. He'd like to win by three laps if he could. Now there's Baker in the 88. He's challenged 
by the 27 of Rusty Wallace. And behind those two, other contenders in the lead lap, Schrader and Petty. Back straight away. Great battle going on, and it is Rusty Wallace under Baker taking the spot. Wallace moving up. Give him fourth position now, and Baker falls to fifth. We'll return with more live coverage of the Michigan 400 after this word from your local station. Position, rim riding around. Morgan Shepard in the number 26 car out of turn two. Give him 13th position. Richmond on the comeback trail. Double pneumonia last winter. The question was, would he ever race again? And here he is charging relentlessly back through the field on this two-mile track this afternoon. Ken, he made a late pit stop during that caution play, came back in the second time, and that put him far back in the field. Remember, he had moved up to fourth position from his 18th starting position, but now he's having to fight that battle again coming through the pack. 58 laps are complete. Let's take a look at the top 10. There's the leader right now. At Earnhardt, out in front, Bill Elliott is in second, Rick Wilson third, Rusty Wallace fourth, Buddy Baker in fifth. In the sixth position is Missouri's Ken Schrader, then Richard Petty is in seventh, Darrell Waltrip in eighth, Bobby Hillen in ninth, and Alan Kulwicki from Wisconsin is up into the tenth position. Rookie of the year a year ago, Kulwicki having a good run in 11th, Kyle Petty. Tim Richmond now reported in 12th. He continues to get to the field. 13th is Morgan Shepard. 14th is Ricky Rudd. And there's Darrell Waltrip in the 17 car. Now he is pulled in right behind Kyle Petty. And if Tim Richmond can, there's four cars directly in front of him, so he can take four positions if he can get by all those cars. Turn three. Richmond takes one. High side, maroon car, out back. That's Tim Richmond. Had such an outstanding finish to the inside of last year and physically just did everything everybody required of him. Was everywhere, making three and four appearances today. Chicago, back into the south, then back into the frozen climbs to the north, and it finally caught up with him. He just passes Kyle Petty in the number 21 car. Now he pulls up on Alan Kowicki. That's Kowicki on the inside, Richmond on the outside. He comes up on the outside. He's making his shot down the back straightaway. Bobby Hillen directly in front of him now. Two down of those four and two to go, so he's picking the ball very quickly. He's closing on Bobby Hillen in ninth. Kyle Petty looks him over. You see Waltrip taking a very high line, and down to the bottom comes Richmond. Has the running room low on the track. You can run three wide all around this track. We've seen them do it for years. Here's Richmond using up the bottom side of the racetrack, approaching the first turn. Danny's car appears to be working very well. The other two cars, he passed on the outside when he caught Bobby Hill, and he went right by on the inside. It looked like he's going to make that move on Darrell Walker. Ashland, Ohio is Tim Richmond. Any place he hangs his hat is home, and he's hanging it all out here this afternoon on this two-mile track, and he is closing now. He has just taken the Bobby Hillen car, ready to work a little on Darrell Waltrip. And Walter had his 43. And he overwhelms Waltrip. Here he comes for Petty. Walter went very high into turn three. Now he does set his sights on Richard Petty and another group of cars up in front of him. Richard Petty is in seventh. You're riding with Richard Petty, looking out his back window and seeing Tim Richmond grow ever larger as Petty sees him in the rearview mirror the same way. Back straight away. Listen to that motor sing. Surges down that back stretch. Using all the gear they have for this two-mile track. And Richmond closes in. They turned the engine some 81, 82, sometimes as much as 8,300 RPMs in a draft. So that's why it sings so much, producing well over 600 horsepower. 358 cubic inch engines, 3,200 pound cars, and here he comes. Richmond closing, ever closer. Notice all the paper. There's a, always a tremendous amount of paper that comes out of the grandstand, and if it catches on the front of your car, that can be disastrous. It certainly can because it'll overheat the engine, and it doesn't take much to get it to the point. If you get it much over 200 degrees, well, then it's going to spell trouble later on. 
Michael Waltrip with a new sponsor on his car this time is coming into the pits. It looked like a lot of smoke coming from the engine as it came off of turn four, so Mike Walker having his problems here today. For the moment, Petty steadies the distance between himself and Richmond. But you can see Richmond right here getting just a little bit of an advantage and getting in there just a little deeper. Dale Earnhardt staying up in front, seeking his 27th career Winston Cup victory this afternoon, defending champion, 19... 80 champion as well. Stays out in front and has a good size lead over car number nine, Bill Elliott, running in second place. More from Michigan in a moment. One quarter distance. With the first 50 laps down, Dale Earnhardt first, Bill Elliott second, Rick Wilson then third at the quarter mile, at the quarter mark, with Schrader running in fourth and Rusty Wallace in fifth. The attrition through the first 100 miles of competition here. H.B. Bailey retiring after he nailed the wall in turn two, and Derek Cope never came out of the garage area this morning. Had a problem, broke a cam, and so the man that had qualified second for this race from Spokane, Washington, did not get a chance to start as a DNS. With more comments on the first quarter of the race, here's Chris Economaki. You may wonder about the emotions of these drivers. A great crowd here today during the driver introduction was quite vocal whether they like or dislike some of the drivers. Leader Dale Earnhardt got a big round of booze. At that, he turned to the person next to him and said, they do love me here, don't they? Darrell Waltrip, who got a pretty good round of booze, just mounted, it's a dark and lonely business. And Bill Elliott, not used to being booed, said, I got to get out of here. Back to you, Ken. <laughs> Well, it's a lot different than the last two years. Now, look at this. Uh, as you watch Richard Petty and Tim Richmond here, let's take a look at the race summary to the moment. We've had five leaders, five lead changes, and with that one caution, the speed down to 154.783 miles per hour in our Quaker State resume. And the third-place car, Rusty Wallace, is coming into the pits, and this would be an unscheduled pit stop for him, Tim. Tire change on Wallace. Perhaps something equalized here. Now, can he change those tires and stay in the lead lap? It'll be close. This is a two-mile track. It takes him about 43, 44 seconds to go around. A good, quick pit stop for Rusty Wallace. Let me. Earnhardt's coming off the turn four, coming to the start-finish line, and Rusty goes out, and Earnhardt will get around him. He has the momentum going into the first turn. There is Rusty Wallace, and here's Earnhardt on the outside about to pass. He put him a lap down. Indeed, he does. 11 and 9 tenths of a second on pit road then. Good pit stop, but... The slowdown time coming into the pits and then, of course, getting his speed back up takes a lot more time. Richard Petty and Tim Richmond are just having a tremendous go for it here. Here is Richard Petty, and right behind him, right behind him is Tim Richmond, and they've been going at it for the last four laps. Now, Petty, let's take a look on tape here. Whoa, as Kyle Petty gets a little loose out of turn two. Down in the bottom of turn two. Richmond made this move to go beneath Richard Petty and take seventh spot. Richard would have no part of it, although Richmond was successful here. Petty was able to come back around him and end up back in seventh, leaving Richmond in eighth. Boy, it looked like Richmond was gone for the moment. That's not the case. And here is Richard Petty closing in on his son, Kyle Petty. Six and seven. And here's a pass again. This is live now. Down to the bottom of the racetrack, and you can see Richard Nod has all of a sudden Richmond out of turn two. Just used the slingshot in the corner and went beneath him. He got him in the right position that time again. Got built his momentum and drove right around him. Of course, he used the draft off of Kyle's car as well, which helped to pull him up there. Now he's going to work on Kyle. Kyle Petty is running in sixth. Tim Richmond is in seventh. Richard Petty is back there in eighth. Now you see Kyle in the bottom as he got a run out of turn number two. Have a problem with the in-car camera on Kyle Petty's machine for a moment. Kyle making a great run. That car is sticking on the bottom of the race track. Yes, it is. Of course, the Wood Brothers prepare that car. They've had a lot of wins here at this track with David Pearson when he used to drive for it. Now, 
as Kyle goes around Kenny Schrader, Tim Richmond decides to make that move, too, on the inside. Ken Schrader was in fifth. He falls to sixth, and here comes Richmond putting him back another spot. Now Richard Petty going after Schrader as they lap Buddy Arrington going into turn three. All of this live from Michigan here on CBS this afternoon. The Cannon Greater Hartford Open follows next in our live events on CBS. Earnhardt continuing to draw away. We have a lap time going. Let's see just how fast he is going here. They should be pitting maybe the next 10 to 12 laps. Well, in fact, right now, Benny Parsons, one of the top runners, is coming into the pits. Checking that time on Earnhardt, the leader, as he comes to the line to see what he's averaging through traffic. 42.8, only 168.2. I'll tell you, that's surprising, Ken, that he would be running that fast at this point of the race. Normally, they'll slow down over their qualifying speeds of about 170. They'll, they'll slow down to maybe 167 or so, but Earnhardt's setting a blistering pace here right now. 12 and 8 tenths of a second. Parsons was on pit road. He returns to the action as Connie Saylor pits and comes back out as well. Continuing to lead, Earnhardt. And look at Richard Petty, now fighting with Schrader in the Ford. Richard Petty's Pontiac on the outside, the Ford, number 90, down low. The 90 seems to be a, his chassis a little bit loose. The back end not holding as tight as he would like. It permits Richard Petty to move right around on the outside. So Petty goes to seventh. Schrader falls to eight. Meanwhile, that car is just working perfectly, Ken. As we've seen it so many times this year, he looks like he did when he was winning that sixth out of the first race this year. Kyle Petty, as we have his camera now, looking back at his father, Richard. <laughs> Kyle and Richard Petty. And it heavy here as they run up in front. Remember that Kyle has had a victory. And father looking at son here. Richard closes up on Kyle. And they will trade sheet metal if they have to. Running in fifth and six, four and a bowl. Dale Earnhardt was just in for 15 and two ten seconds. We saw one of the crew members reaching inside, making a chassis a good adjustment on his forward. A little less than 16 seconds as he gets back at green flag pit stop coming up. As you mentioned, Dale Earnhardt was in a little while ago, took on right side tires. Ricky Rudd is in. Lake Speed, Jeff Bodine is in. Rick Wilson, who was running up in the top five a little earlier to come in he took on left side tires and these changes have made this man the leader tim richmond can he do it can he win three in a row a year ago not many would have given a nickel come december that he would even be back in a race car this year many said he'd be out the entire season but right now tim richmond is leading here in the michigan 400 but he will have a pit stop coming up before too long in fact he's coming up on his teammates Benny Parsons, and Benny has already made a pit stop. He's about to go a lap down, but Richmond will have to stop before too long. Harry Gann is in the pit at the moment. Harry hoping to have a good day. His last good run was here a year ago when he finished second. Number 91 overshot his pits. He got a little squirrely coming in. It's got it locked up. Kenny Bouchard. It's one of the top modified drivers. And here is Tim Richmond now coming into the pits for his scheduled pit stop. Let's go to Davis Bay. Tim Richmond, who has had to come all the way from the back of the field on pit road. Green flag stop crew quickly going to work on the right side tire chain. Cleaning the windshield, Richmond gets a cold drink, ready to charge back out into the action. A lot of problems can sideline a race car. Here's Richmond ready to roll. A long time on that gas can. It's taken a long time to fuel the car. There was a significant delay there. That will extend that pit stop time just a little bit. Let's quickly wrap up how Richmond got himself to the back of the pack earlier. We mentioned a lot of problems could stop a race car. In this case, it was an imagined problem. As Richmond left pit road, he hit a ripple in the pavement out there. He thought the axle on the car was broken, so he made a precautionary pit stop. It proved to be okay. As a result, he lost a lot of time. That dropped him all the way to the back of the pack. He had to charge all the way back to the lead. Now a long pit stop, and he's scrambling again. Ken? Everyone seems to be scrambling with the exception of a couple of people out here today, Earnhardt and Elliott. And they are just moving right along as expected. Kyle Petty, of course, uh, running an awfully good race here in the car 21, but Richard made a pit stop at the same time that Tim Richmond was making a pit stop, so he has made his stop. 
Now Schrader took over the lead with all these pit stops for the moment he had it as first place. And I think he's coming in now to give up his shot at the lead. That'll give him five points for leading a lap. An additional five points bonus is given for the driver who leads the most laps. Davey Allison is also pitting, as is Dave Marcus at this juncture. And we are now 84 laps deep into this race. Tim, as you can see, they're taking a lot of hot dog wrappers or something off the front of Kenny Schrader's Ford, and they do pick those up as, they, as the wind sucks them out of the grandstand. Neil Bonnet also pitting. Uh, here's Earnhardt, and when everything gets sorted out, We'll find Earnhardt, I would presume, back in first, although he was in the pits a little longer than he wanted to be. Well, he made a pretty good pit stop. Uh, Jeff Bodine, I think, has not made a pit stop yet in the car number five, so he should be the leader at the moment, and he'll have a pit stop coming up here very shortly. Jeff Bodine's number five for the moment is in front. What a turnaround for him after last year, and he won the Daytona 500. The entire Rick Hendrick stable, with the exception of Richmond, has had some real problems this year. Waltrip's car, in fact, the rumor is there'll be a big announcement in Daytona in a week about the Waltrip team and that the Darwall colors may come out again. We'll just have to wait and see what that story is. There's Bodine in a Bob Riley built car. Almost all these cars are built by the same people. We'll tell you more about that story in a moment as Bodine, for the moment, leads the Michigan 400. Checking the Budweiser leaderboard. 86 of 200 laps then completed. Dale Earnhardt had just reappropriated first position after Jeff Bodine pitted, and he has a 12 second advantage over Bill Elliott, then Rusty Wallace third, Tim Richmond fourth, and Kyle Petty in fifth. The second five at the present time would look like this it would be Bobby Hill in fifth, Richard Petty sixth, Davey Allison seventh, Bill Parsons eighth, Morgan Shepard ninth, Buddy Baker tenth. And then Rick Wilson's 11th, Alan Kowicki is in 12th. Darrell Waltrip has just been lapped by leader Dale Earnhardt. Here's Richard Petty closing in on Bobby Hillen in a struggle for fifth position. Richard Petty right up against the wall trying the high side here on Bobby Hillen as they fight for fifth. Broken ribs have forced Richard Petty off the last two races. The injury was serious, but his age starting to catch up with old King Richard? I don't know that getting older makes it heal slower. I think I just hit the walls harder than I used to, but really, I guess it does. If 25 years ago, if, if I'd have broke a rib the next race, I'd be out there running, and uh, you know, it's been a couple of weeks that we missed races, so uh, I guess age has got something to do with it. Well, there you see Richard Petty, and here you see Davey Allison squirting up through, taking a couple of spots. He is past Richard. He's after Bobby Hillen. That's the Harry Rainier Lundy, number 28 on the bottom of the racetrack. There you see him down low, challenging Bobby Hillen. Battle for fifth now has Allison sticking the nose of the T-Bird in front. On the outside, the Buick. Bobby Hillen pulls back around him again. A couple of youngsters going at it. Bobby Hillen, what, 22, 23 now? 23 years old. And Bobby Allison's son, Davey, running for Rookie of the Year. 25 years of age, has run this track a lot with the ARCA Group, the Automobile Racing Club of America. Richard Petty scanning this action directly in front of him. Richard back in seventh position, giving us these pictures. And here's Morgan Shepard taking a shot at Richard. Petty fends him off. Challenger is on the inside. Morgan Shepard, the Kenny Bernstein-owned car, the world champion drag racer, Owning that car number 26, and there's the number 55, Phil Parsons, getting back into the act. Phil has had some very good runs this year on the circuit as he moves on the inside of Morgan Shepard for eight. He's a young driver, grew up in Detroit, not too far from here, but moved south to really get involved in racing. Has a full-time ride now, and has been doing very well. Average speed staying at 157.4 miles an hour. The record for this race was a 153 clip that goes back a few years. Here's Earnhardt in traffic. There you see the Bodine number five just in front of him and the Greg Sachs number 50. That Bodine car, they're now building their own racing machines in the Gary Nelson Racing Stable, as is Earnhardt's people. Most of the cars are built by Banjo Matthews, Dick Hutcherson, 
for all the Laughlin Mark, people. Mark Laughlin, yes. But this been... is a Riley car. This number five, one of two they have constructed from the ground up. And they're now building a third as they try to get a handle on having their, their own place. Certainly it's one way that they can maybe have a little development that others wouldn't know about when you get the chassis from the same place as most of them have been doing the three that we mentioned over the years. The chances are basically the same. Of course, they take them back and tailor them to their own needs and to suit the driver. But at the same time, if they build the thing from ground up in their shop, well, then they, if they have any secrets, they're able to keep them within house. Bodine going a lap down. Now the Childress car, I believe, it started out as a, as a banjo piece, but it has been so modified. Look at Bodine. Stay right with him here. They run side by side. That will give that second place man a chance to catch up. Two cars running side by side, and now Bernhardt's willing to let him go so they can run single file. They had some very heated battles last month. Oh, oh, did North they ever. And, and boy, I'll tell you, there's no love lost between those two drivers, two good, hard competitors. Well, any staunch racing fan knows the story here, and it's either yay or nay on Dale Earnhardt and his conduct through some special events this year, like the Winston, and then some very hard racing. Papers have been full of letters and controversy about Earnhardt's style, which is very much like his dad when he used to kind of put a fender on you now and then. In fact, he drives exactly like his dad, Ralph Earnhardt, did, and, and they're just hard chargers that's their style of driving they want to go to the front if they possibly can like Earnhardt now Dale is trying to move around Jeff Bodine but Bodine wants to stay in the lead lap so he's doing everything he can to keep Earnhardt back there he's making work for it and as they run side by side that 12 second interval back to Elliott continues to shrink now here's Earnhardt getting just in front of Bodine in a tight draft well watch this one closely folks there have been fireworks between these two before this year but for the moment, there's enough space in between them so that it looks like it may not happen again. They said that that kind of thing was all over. One well, wonders. Yeah, but uh, they've been warned by the crew chiefs of those two cars have been warned as they put on this little battle here by the NASCAR officials say, hey, tell your drivers out there to cool it, fellas. Lake Speed about to be blitzkrieg by the car number three, Waltrip. Down on pit road, the timers keeping track of the machines. Earnhardt stays in front. One of my favorite stories was Ned Jarrett and Dale Earnhardt riding to the races with their wives and riding home with their races. And then they got into a situation at a at a race where Earnhardt parked you right around the tree. He sure did. Now that was Ralph Earnhardt. This was Ralph Earnhardt. We were good friends and our wives. With my wife's name is Martha. Dale Earnhardt's mother's name is Martha, and we did. We rode. How, the how was the ride home that night? Very cold. I'll assure you, the ladies were willing to talk, but the drivers were not. We will return with more live coverage of the Michigan 400 after this word from your local station. We are at the halfway point of the race, and at the halfway point, Richard Petty had his hands full. Take a look at this. Petty approaching turn number one, Rick Wilson directly behind him. He goes low in turn one. Something happens here that slaps him right up against the wall. Wilson darts down the inside. Petty just scraping the wall, was able to gather it back up at 165 miles an hour and continue on his way. But now he's backed off a tad. He's running right behind Ken Schrader in the number 90. He lost several positions, Ken, and he slowed for a lap or two just to sort of feel it out. He didn't know if he had knocked the fender in against the tire. He wanted to check it out and see, but he feels that it's okay, so he's picked speed back up again and is going out. Richard Petty's car number 43. You think he got tapped? Could very well have. We couldn't tell by the, the replay there. We couldn't see the other car behind him, but all of a sudden, he just went into the wall, and he did clip the wall a little bit. You could see the, the car... Uh, as it hit the wall, it jarred it a little bit, but uh, he could have got just a little tap going into the turn. Perhaps from outside, they might have another look for us. We'll, we'll check and see. Here's Richard Petty in the 43, in the back straightaway. He was running back in 12th position, in 11th when that happened, I believe, and Rick Wilson just peeled up through traffic in a hurry. Wilson's having an excellent day. Your leaderboard looks like this. Earnhardt's first, Elliott second at halfway, Rusty Wallace third, Tim Richmond fourth, Davey Allison in the fifth, Kyle Petty is in sixth, Phil Parsons in seventh, Bobby Hillen in eighth, Rick Wilson in ninth, Morgan Shepard in tenth, Buddy Baker is eleventh, Schrader 
then was shown as 12th, Richard Petty 13th. And Ken, the fans might wonder why we're seeing Rusty Wallace up on the board there in third place now when he made an unscheduled pit stop for a change of tires and we saw him go a lap down. But the other leaders have made pit stops since then. Now he'll have to stop again earlier if there's no caution, so he's a little out of sync as far as his pit stops are concerned, but he is definitely in that position. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd feels the hot breath of the number three Chevrolet. Ford T-Bird entered by Bud Moore. Going down a lap. And Ricky Rudd in 15th falls down. 14 cars in the lead lap. And Bill Elliott apparently has lost a cylinder or something. That Ford number nine has slowed. Bill Elliott looks like he's really off the pace for the moment. We can take a look at that petty incident again from another camera and see if he was tapped. Here they are. Entering turn one. Rick Wilson on the inside in the car number four as Betty moved up on the outside of Phil Parsons. And Wilson goes in. It looked like he did just clip him a bit with the right front corner of the Wilson car getting into Petty's left rear quarter, sending him up into the wall very slightly. That's not reaction. That's pure instinct. Yes, Petty knew he'd been tapped. He knew he was on his way. He had just a fraction of a second to make the save. And he keeps right on trucking. Well, that is experience. 30 years of it. It pays off at times. Currently in second place, Bill Elliott. And the word is that he is falling back, and there may be a mechanical malfunction on the number nine car as it seeks its fourth straight win in this nearly half-million-dollar event. Tough break for Elliott, who has been trying to win, uh, as you say, the fourth time in a row. But at the pace that he's running out there now, Tim, he won't have much of a shot at winning. Mike Joy may be able to tell us more about that. Dan Elliott, what's the problem? I think we dropped the vial. We've, got a, we've lost the cylinder. We're just going to keep running as long as we can run and hope it'll finish. Is there anything you can do to improve that condition? Nothing but pray. Nothing at all. Well, Ken, it's, uh, and they do a lot of that, but it's sort of doubtful for prayer will bring that cylinder back. Of course, he's in second place in the point standings, and he does want to stay out there and run as long as he can and get as many points as he possibly can. He needs oral right now. Yeah. Earnhardt first, Wallace second, Tim Richmond in the third, Davey Allison, and here's Richard Petty taking a shot at Baker. So that little tap on the wall didn't affect that car of his too much. He felt it out for a lap or two, but it's moving right on back up too. That's one of the positions he lost when he tapped the wall, but he's regained it now. So that puts him up to 11th and ready to challenge to the top 10. I think Morgan Shepard's the next man that he would encounter. He's driving his heart out after Tim. He does in every race, and, and here's Baker making another move to come back on him. 200 times a winner, but has not won since the Firecracker 400, 4th of July, 1984. I'd like to see him win 201 and, and then hang it up, I tell you. You worry. When you see that man darting after all he has contributed to sport and make those kind of saves... You wonder how many more times he'll just gather it up and keep on going like that. Well, you do, but he enjoys it so much. And he says as long as he enjoys it, he'll continue to do it. And he's still doing it very well, as we've seen here today. And he has said, I, I really worry about what I do. I like to do this. I really enjoy it. You're absolutely right. Here's Earnhardt out in front. Benny Parsons has now been lapped by the tank commander here, Dale Earnhardt. Relentless as he just knocks him down. If he can win by a lap, you'll see him do it here today. More from the Michigan 400 with Earnhardt leading shortly. Dale Earnhardt was in command. Bill Elliott was then in second with Rusty Wallace third, Tim Richmond fourth, and Davey Allison was maintaining fifth. The attrition thus far in the event. Derek Cope never got a chance to start today broken engine as they warmed up this morning hb bailey brought out the lonely caution flag for one time as he crashed in turn two mike waltrip's car swallowed a piston buddy arrington's car has had a valve problem and butch miller the great midwest star number 08 has retired as well so with half of the race gone by let's get some comments from the dean of american race casters chris economy well, if this race continues at this pace, this big crowd is going to get an early start at home. At 100, uh, 
160 miles, the speed was 156 miles an hour. At 180 miles, it was 157 miles an hour. And now at the halfway mark, the speed has increased to 158.94 miles an hour. Very fast. There are 35 cars still on the track. Only one yellow flag is waved for a minor accident involving H.P. Bailey. But there have been 10 changes in the lead. Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott, Neil Bonnet, Ken Schrader, Dale Earnhardt, Tim Richmond, and Jeff Bodine have all taken a turn leading this interesting competition today. Back to you, Ken. Now, the old record's 153 miles per hour, so they can really shatter it at this pace, and that was with no caution flags. So this man is really getting it on. The 14th place man, Alan Kowicki, has just gone a lap down to Earnhardt as he continues to pursue perfection in this yellow and blue Richard Childress prepared Chevy. Trying to put another man a lap down, and for the moment, they're holding him up just a tad. Not much, though. That's Schrader in the number 90, running in 13th. Earnhardt's car continues to just work beautifully. Whatever part of the racetrack he wants to drive it on, Ken, he's able to take it. If he needs to go inside or out, wherever he needs to go, the car's working for him. Ned, let's, let's bring us up today. Well, that was the halfway mark at 113 of 200 laps complete, which is where we're at. Earnhardt is first, Rusty Wallace second, Tim Richmond now third, Kyle Petty fourth, Davey Allison fifth, Rick Wilson sixth. Phil Parsons in seventh, Bobby Hill in his eighth, Bill Elliott has dropped from second back to ninth, Richard Petty is in tenth, Morgan Shepard is eleventh, Buddy Baker twelfth, Ken Schrader thirteenth, Alan Kowicki fourteenth, Benny Parsons has just pitted, and as he does, Ricky Rudd moves into fifteenth, up into sixteenth goes Lake Speed, to seventeenth Bodine, and eighteenth Walter. And you mentioned that Benny Parsons is in the pits. He is taking on left side tires. And Phil Parsons, who was up in, uh, what, seventh position, had made a pit stop not too long ago as well. Thirteen cars remain in the lead lap, but they won't stay there long with Earnhardt continuing to lawnmower the rest of the field. There's the first place car, and there's Baker in the 88 car. In 12th, he's about to go a lap down. Once that... Dale Earnhardt is about as hard-bitted as any racer you could ever find. Once he gets the bit in his jaw, he's gone, and you can't hold him back. He is a hard start, no question about it. Now, there's the interval. Back to the second-place card. It's a 15 and 6 tenths of a second between first and second, between Earnhardt leading, Wallace in second, and then Richmond's back there in third. That's a little over a third of a lap. It takes uh, about 43 seconds to go around this track, and so almost 16 seconds, so that's a uh, pretty good lead. There have been six previous winners in Winston Cup racing as they finished 13 events this year. Moving toward the halfway point at Daytona in the Firecracker 400. Looking further back in the field, there you see the number one, that's the Brett Bodine car, and with him comes number 71, Dave Marcus, and they're back outside of the top 15 at the present. And the second place car is coming into the pits, but we said earlier that he would have to come in earlier than Earnhardt and the others because he came in earlier the time before. Now Rusty Wallace getting right side tires on his car. He took on right side tires when he pitted before. Let's see if he can stay in the lead lap this time. That's 14 and one-tenth second on that pit stop. He comes back on the track, and I think he's going to make it. Earnhardt comes to the line, dives into the first turn. Here comes Wallace coming back to speed now. He's already up into turn two, and you ought to see Earnhardt make an entry into the picture right about here. So a very good there pit he stop. He came into the pits very quickly and got out of the pits very quickly, and that is so important on making a good pit stop, not just the time that you're actually stopping. Let's for just a moment talk about racers and drivers. You were always considered a great driver. You never really wanted to be a racer. You wanted to bring them home and win races. Earnhardt is the old-fashioned Curtis Turner, Ralph Earnhardt, plain old flat racer. He just wants to run that thing as long as the wheels stay on. That is his style. Some drivers just can't stand it unless they're running out front. And uh, others are content to, to try to out them last one, but Earnhardt uh, is not in that class. He and, wants to be up front. And there is some sponsor pressure. Some sponsors say, we want you to be in front until it blows up or you win. 
no question about it, there is pressure from the sponsors today because they're spending big bucks to put the car out there and they want it to be up front to get as much exposure as they possibly can. And uh, that makes it tough on the driver. But, but, Ned, in your experience, a little further back, in those years, the factories were in there and you had the same kind of pressure and yet you won 50 races. The pressure was there, no question about it. The big difference then is here's Dale Earnhardt coming into the pits. The leader is coming into the pits and this would be a scheduled pit stop and we're going to Mike Joy who has that story. Earnhardt reaching out for a cold drink as they service the car. He went only 40 laps, 80 miles on this pit stop because last time he was in, he took off before Barney Boyd had that second can of gas done. Now, see, they're done with the tires before he finishes with all the gas. Finally, the man with the catch can shakes his head. Yes, gas drips from the back from the overfill, and Earnhardt's away. 15 and 3 10 seconds for car number three. Second place man going down into the first turn. That would be Tim Richmond now. Yep. Richmond getting a chance to get out in front here for the moment. That is if he catches Dale Earnhardt, did he? Earnhardt had a good lead on him. And down to the back straightaway, and the interval, I think, is, a, is still in Earnhardt's favor. Yeah, I think it's going to be a few uh, points. It's less than a, a second. It's about half a second between first and second. So that was a very good pit stop by Dale Earnhardt. And again, getting his lead back up very quickly enabled him to stay out front because he had a big lead. Remember, for Rusty Wallace, Penny, he had a 15-second lead on him, and Richmond was about that far behind Wallace. Richmond's now only about 10 car lengths behind him. Richmond has a chance to go back after him. You have Chevrolet running one and two now. He'll have a pit stop coming up before too long. Let's see what he can do with him. You think he'll try him here a little? His tires are down. Well, Earnhardt took on left side tires that time, which is probably a pretty good strategy because the left side tires do a lot of holding here on this racetrack, and fresh tires normally will run faster than heated up tires, so I think Earnhardt will maintain the distance. Well, the guy I picked to win this race today was Davey Allison. He's in third, and he's right behind her. In fact, he's making a move down the inside the road for second place. Davey Allison, who has won two races in his rookie year. There you see the number three out in front. Number 28, Davey Allison right there behind Tim Richmond in the 25 car. The maroon car is second, Richmond. And young Davey continues to be a real factor out here with his Ford Thunderbird. More from the Michigan 400 after these messages. Or if 200 laps are complete, Dale Earnhardt is in front, and we could have a lead yes, change developing could. here. Jim Richmond moving up on the inside. A surprise with Earnhardt with the new left side tires, but Richmond making loose. Crowd is up and cheering as Tim Richmond stretching for three in a row, lengthens that car out a little, and pushes the nose into first place. On the outside, here comes Earnhardt back, and they match each other into turn two. Earnhardt pulls out around. Richmond settles back in second place, and Davey Allison right there in third. This is the battle for the lead. Sometimes when you get those tires, they don't work out quite like you might have hoped. No, they don't, and that is a surprise because the left side tires normally make it stick a little better down on the inside of the track, but Earnhardt's car does not look like it's sticking as well down there as it did earlier. Tim Richmond makes another challenge on the inside. Richmond says, me and Sugar Ray Leonard, we ought to have a talk. I'm no fighter, but I think I sure know how to make a comeback. Here he is going out into first place and back up Earnhardt. No respect for a comeback on this man on the outside. Earnhardt works him over, takes it right to the wall, and goes back into first. And Allison pulls up. Young Davy Allison. Three car dice in first place, going to turn three. Give it to Richmond. High side. Earnhardt working on it. Incredible races. Inches apart. Back to the inside comes Earnhardt as he faked the outside through the dummy and then comes down low. Here they are going to turn one. The crowd on their feet all the way around. Record crowd here today in Michigan. Biggest in history watching this tremendous battle. And Tim Richmond, literally back from the dead in December. It was a matter of hours at some time as his family worried. And now here he is. We saw him in January in Ohio, and there wasn't much question he would not be racing this year. 
and here he is going for number three. There's Phil Parsons, number 55 in there. And remember, he's in the lead lap, running for it. Bill Elliott's gone back to the garage. Elliott retires number nine. It's over. He will not win four in a row. Davey Allison pits 28. Third place car is on pit road. The changes taking place as the race shows 128 complete. Allison changing rubber, trying to get it back out here. Here's Earnhardt back under Richmond for the lead. Richmond tries to shove him down the track a little. Puts the inside shoulder to him. And here comes Parsons. Remember that... Yeah, Parsons had made a pit stop again, so he's, he's, trying to get his, uh, he's trying to get back in the lead lap. And his 12. Just briefly, they had him up. Ooh. It's a wild move there coming down the main straightaway as he shoots to the inside. One thing Dale Earnhardt and Tim Richmond will do is give the fans their money's worth. Hole in the middle. Parsons takes a look, says, thank you, I just assumed wait. He don't mind mixing it up with them either. Uh-uh. Now, Richmond has a pit stop to make here before too long. Buddy Baker brings his car in for a pit stop. Jeff Lodine was in here just a few moments ago. So, green flag pit stops. Now, that's the uh, other car from the Bodine family. That's the number one car, Brett Bodine, Haas Ellington's car in trouble. He coasted into the pits on his pit stop. Apparently, he was out of gas. And here comes Richmond. Tim Richmond into the pits. We knew that he'd be coming in before too long. Let's go to Davis Bay. Tim Richmond went 48 laps on his last tank of fuel, 48 on this one as well. It is a scheduled stop and a routine stop as they go to the left side tires. They're changing left side only on Richmond. He gets a drink. They clean the windshield. Again, the wave will likely be for the gas. Indeed, the tires are on. They're waiting to make sure they've got every drop of fuel in. Henry Benfield jerks that final gas can away, and Richmond is down pit road quickly. A good, clean stop. And notice the number 88 directly behind. That was 14 and 9 10 seconds. Baker in the 88 couldn't get his car to fire. And his crew pushed him about 75 feet before it finally flared up and went back into business. Here comes Kyle Petty and Terry Labonte in the pits. Of course, Labonte several laps down. Dale Jarrett brings the Freelander car in. And Kenny Schrader apparently was out of gas as well. They're pushing his car down pit road as Kyle Petty gets left side tires. Richard Petty is pitted and he's back in the race. Earnhardt has a breather for a moment. But what we have learned is that this man of number 25 can run with this man in the blue and yellow number three. He just needs an opportunity to get up there with him. Now, Phil Parsons has unlapped himself. Let's go to Mike Joy, who's standing by with a guy who was hoping for better things today. Well, he's been to victory lane the last three years in a row in this race, Ken, but here he's in the garage. Bill, what finally let go? Well, I think it ended up breaking a valve spring first, and it ended up quitting. I really don't know what the circumstance was, but... The car really was working good, and I felt like I had a good shot at Earnhardt, but yet, if you can't finish, you ain't going to win. It'll be tough in the points, too, falling out here. Well, I think that puts us about out of the points because, you know, we keep falling out of races. There ain't no way to win a championship. It's a tough break for Bill Elliott. That's a big point payoff next week in Daytona Beach. Ken, this car was easy to find. We just followed the long, snaking trail of oil through the garage area. So a tough break for Bill Elliott. He doesn't fall out of too many races, but uh, this is an important one here today. And Dale Earnhardt now a little, breathes a little bit easier because uh, certainly Elliott was one that proved early in the race that he could run with it. Let's talk point standings for just a moment here. With so much money at stake, Dale Earnhardt, the way he's running right now, is going to pocket $150,000 at Daytona. Bill Elliott will come out with a grand, although that could be in jeopardy with what's happened today. Neil Bonnet still very much in this race. Terry Labonte, as you see, is fourth in these standings. Kyle Petty is fifth. And Kyle Petty has come from 16th earlier this season. He was all the way up to fourth. He slithered back one, but he's very much in the, in the hunt this year in the point battle. He has matured, Ken, as a driver and has had some very good runs in the world of this year. Of course, as you mentioned earlier, won the 600-mile race at Charlotte last month, the biggest win of his career, but it proved that the guy has, uh, has arrived in this sport. As we watch Dale Earnhardt in number three continue to dominate the Mission 400 and try to win it for the first time. We'll be back with more of the action shortly.
With 133 of 200 laps completed, Dale Earnhardt continues to set a record pace of 159 miles an hour, leading Rusty Wallace in second place, his car beginning to smolder some. In third spot is Ricky Rudd, fourth is Morgan Shepard, and fifth is Ken Schrader. In the, in the second five, Tim Richmond is now shown in six, Buddy Baker in seven, Kyle Petty is in eight, Bobby Hillen is in ninth, and Rick Wilson, Florida driver, is in 10th place. There's Rusty Wallace's car, number 27. Vanessa is off her feed. The car named Vanessa, who sat on the, which sat on the pole, is showing a lot of smoke and is beginning to fall back a bit here. Still maintaining second place, but that doesn't harbor a good future. Here is Earnhardt. Just in front of him, Phil Parsons, on the tail end of the lead lap, being shown in the 11th position. Phil has run very good there. In front. He passed Earnhardt, as a matter of fact. A while back, he was behind him, and he has passed Dale Earnhardt. It might be that Earnhardt uh, said, hey, go ahead and, and pass me. Let me ride your draft for a while and uh, save my gas and, and save my car and run along here in the draft. And he's doing a good job. Of it. Trouble continues for Kelly Arboro. Back in the pits another time. And Earnhardt seems to be willing to play a waiting game. But well, no, no longer. No, no longer. <laughs> he said it's time to go now. Yeah. Had enough of this. Rusty Wallace second, Morgan Shepard third. This will be 140 laps complete when they come by this time. i tell you, Phil Parsons hanging tough here today. Stays right with him. Yes, he does. That car is running well. Now look at this three wide. Upstairs, downstairs. Light speed up next to the wall. Kenny Schrader in the middle and Neil Bonney down on the inside. From Bonnet's race cam, that's what it looks at 170 miles an hour. Well, that was Alan Kowicki instead of uh, Kenny Schrader in the middle. Lake Speed having a pretty fair run again this afternoon in an entry that he has brought in himself. Mississippi driver, Lake Speed, number 83. <laughs> All right, there you see. Well, there's someone not taking any chances today. Well, I'll tell you, that has to be a little warm out there, Kim, but I guess if this is her favorite sport, why not just go ahead and uh, well, count it? it's quiet in there, and I, it looks to me like she has a radio hitched in there, too. Well, maybe she figures she'll get hit by debris or something. That's right. That helmet would help. No sense taking chances. No. As we watch uh, Dale Earnhardt here continuing to draw a bead on a new record in his first win in the Michigan 400, let's get an update from Mike Joy. Richard Childress, former driver himself, owns the Dale Earnhardt car and runs this team. Well, he rode behind Phil Parsons for a while, and maybe it got a little, not enough wind for him there, or just not enough speed? Well, not enough speed. The car's a little bit loose right there, Mike, and uh, we put on left sides, and just a little bit too loose. You know, we get some rights on there, we'll be okay. Do you worry about him building up as big a lead as he had early, maybe running the car too hard? No, you know, we felt the car would stand it, you know, if, uh, if we could ever get out front. And if you asked him to back off, would he just laugh at you? No, I didn't ask him to back off. He'd say, if you did. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't back off. We just got to try to keep our chassis right right now, get it back like it was. Well, Lula Rosa builds the engines for this car, and they're set to run just as hard as they will go for the full 400 miles. It's always go or blow with car number three with Earnhardt there. You stand on it, and you'll run it just as hard as that car can be run. Now take a look at Neil Bonnet here in car number 75 as he tries to move inside Lake Speed in the 83. They're having a good battle there. Of course, we mentioned earlier that Neil Bonnet is in third place in the point standings. He hasn't had as good a run here today, Ken, as he had hoped to. He qualified way back in the field, but he did lead a lap during the, the only caution that we had. He alertly stayed out there and led a lap, got five bonus points. 15th position being wagered for right here. We'll return with more live coverage of the Michigan 400 after this word from your local station. We have a crack in it here on car number three. He's running side by side with Morgan Shepard and Vanessa, the number 27 car. Very Dr. Krushenbaugh's name's his car. Vanessa definitely has ideas about number three. As you check the interval here, 
back to the number 27 car. It's about three and two tenths of a second between Rusty Wallace in second spot and this car number three. And notice that Morgan is able to stay up there at his own flip. Earnhardt is definitely not running the pace he was running earlier. And as Richard Childress, the car owner, said, it's not handling as well in the turns as it did. Bill Parsons made a pit stop while we were on the commercial break in, and he's back in the pits now. He never got his car up to speed after going back on the track. So that's right for Bill Parsons. He was in 13 and 110 seconds. He's back on pit road another time now. So that will discount any chance he has of registering a good finish. When we went away for the commercial, Rusty Wallace was just, as you said, a little over three seconds behind Dale Earnhardt. It's less than two seconds now, so he is definitely gaining on it. And Earnhardt is willing to use Morgan Shepard as part of a two-car draft to foil the efforts of Rusty Wallace to get back in this race. Now, there you see the number three of Earnhardt still seeking that first win of the Michigan 400, leading in the Winston Cup points, right flush against the wall. And we'll check the interval back to the second place car. Two and one tenths of a second. So it continues to be trim between first and second. And something's out of sync in the chassis setup on car number three. Now notice he dives way down to the bottom, trying to find a place to run down there, and he leaves Morgan high and dry on the outside. And Rusty Wallace, even though he has some smoke coming from his car, apparently it's not affecting the speed on his Pontiac, but he is uh, definitely picking up on Earnhardt, and their pit stops, which were out of sync for a while, are closer in sync now because Earnhardt stopped not too long after Rusty Wallace did the last time. Each of them will have to stop at least one more time. That last pit yes. stop, there is caution on the track. Well, that's a break for all three. A break for Earnhardt to see if he can sort out the malady the car is currently sustaining. It is an opportunity for Rusty Wallace and the Barry Dotson crew, and Dotson's a good chassis man, to see if he can find anything more to do with his car. And for Tim Richmond, this may be all he needs to make a real hunt out of it for the finish. And, but it was not a break for Morgan Shepard, who had just gone a lap down. Dale Earnhardt had moved around him, so now he's two miles behind. Caution is on the track for the second time today. A record was being established, 159.2. I think they could even stand a couple of laps of caution here and still have a shot at the, at the record. They say there's a tailpipe out in turn number two that wasn't there when the race began. Of course, it came off of one of the cars. And, Leaders uh, in. Anything gets on the track, these tires run over, they're very easily cut. And yes, the leaders will all come in, and most of them will take on four tires, and some of them perhaps will make chassis adjustments on their cars. All right, positioning here, as we show, 149 complete. Yeah, it'll be close. distance to go. It'll be awfully close. If they can go the distance from here, that's just a fraction over 100 miles, Ken. And, uh, that 20 was gallons of fuel. Now, who gets the best range? Well, Tim Richmond has gotten off a good gas mileage. Dave Despain reported that he, twice today, has gone 48 laps. So he has gone farther than anyone else that we've seen. Isn't it amazing how they have so few problems as you look down pit road here, the old feeding time at the zoo shot. Just a mass of people and a lot of work going on. You can see some of the crew members. Someone reached inside. Uh, Buddy Baker's car, I believe it was, and made a chassis adjustment on him. And this is the time you do this. If you were racing, would you want to be on the entrance to the pits or the exit to the pits? To get back out here, Ned. Well, in a case like this, I'd rather be at the exit of the pits. Why? Well, because you you can get out and, and not have to, to worry about cars pulling out in front of you as you come down pit road. Of course, you have to be concerned when you pull out of the pits that you don't pull out in front of someone, but that's your call. If you're watching our live action for the first time, we talk about these pit stops and they put on two tires in uh, 12 seconds, they fuel the car. It's not only the stop on pit road, but it's also the going in and getting out that especially, is crucial. Especially during green flag pit stops, it is very crucial at that time. Aerodynamics have become critically important in NASCAR racing, and this season the Ford Thunderbird has been significantly improved. Mike Joy shows us how. Ford has completely reskinned the Thunderbird for 1987. Its aggressive looking new beak is the talk of the garage area. But in the wind tunnel, this made hardly any difference in drag. The big news is at the rear of the car, where T Bird buyers wanted more trunk room. And look at the difference between this and last year's car. 
For the racer, it means the location of this rear spoiler is now one inch further back and two inches higher. It gets much cleaner, freer air than last year's car. And that's what's keeping these birds bolted to the ground at speeds over 200 miles an hour. And next year, Oldsmobile brought this 1988 Cutlass to the track Friday for NASCAR to look at and hopefully approve the body style and aero additions for 1988 competition. As you see, Kelly Yarborough being pushed back here. He overshot his pit, I believe. He's, he's down some and has been all afternoon, the six-time winner. Dave Girard of Oldsmobile brought that car out for NASCAR to see. They only kept it here an hour, and they would not keep it here for us today. That's the new Cutlass Supreme. You're getting a sneak preview, as they say in the magazine business, of the look of 88. Girard, the next day, brought a Duesenberg out here, one of the old uh, uh, boat tail Duesenbergs, you know, with a very sleek, a speedster tail on it. Richard Petty walked by it and said, you know, if they could run that thing backwards, they might have a car. <laughs> <laughs> it did have a very pointed rear end and it certainly would have split the wind open. <laughs> We're still under caution. Second caution of the day at the Michigan 400. Glad you're aboard. The Greater Hartford Open. Cannon Greater Hartford Open coming up. Pat Summerall, Ken Venturi standing by to greet you as soon as this one is over. One lap, and they're going to be racing here this afternoon. And as they prepare for the restart, after everyone had a wholesale opportunity to change whatever they needed on pit road, for everyone, we're ready to go again. And now, line up this way. A couple of cars came in before you give that. Dale Jarrett and Richard Petty have come in to cap their tanks off, hoping that they can go the distance from here, and they only have 48 laps to go. You're Good with move. Richard Petty as he comes down pit road, moves by Kelly Arborough. Rick Wilson has also come in to top his tank. Smart move on their part. Very definitely. Dale Earnhardt in first. Rusty Wallace in second. Tim Richmond in third. And in the fourth place should be Kyle Petty and Davey Allison sitting there in the fifth position. Those cars are all in the lead lap. They've had time. They put on four new tires. They took on a fuel tank of full tank of fuel and made some adjustments on their cars. They should be ready to go at it. Getting ready on a restart here. Everybody has to get prepared for these races. The drivers certainly do and put on all kinds of equipment and they're always worried about debris and parts and all the hazards of motorsport. There's Bob Wishney, our cameraman, up at turn four. They run just about three feet away from Bob all afternoon. Here's Mike Joy with a late update. Mike? Richard Childress, 50 laps on one tank of gas. Can you make it? It's going to be really tight. You know, I, we've been going, we figure around 48, but we'll just have to wait and see, you know, we, to see what kind of position we're in at that time. I think that means it's a coin flip or maybe a crapshoot. They had a big huddle here. Should they pit him with one lap to go? They decided to gamble and go for it. It's developing into another Michigan dramatic finish as we've had so many times in the field coming down. Completing 153 laps this time by. We're showing eight cars in the lead lap again, and Richard Petty is one of those cars. He's the only one that came back in and knocked off the fuel. I beg your pardon, Rick Wilson. Rick Wilson did as well. Two drivers that should be able to definitely go the distance. On the break, Bernhardt skedaddles. Rusty Wallace staying with him. Richard Petty bears down. Now, Petty may play an interesting game here. I don't know how hard he'll want to run. He may want to play a conservation role here, figuring these guys will blow it out and have to pit again and leave him in a position to win his 200 first. Petty's strategy, and I'm sure Dale Inman was in on that one, was key. Here he is under Bobby Hillen in the number eight car. Well, apparently he's going to try to go on to the front. And of course, he's back there in a the position to do a lot of drafting, and that will save a little bit of fuel. To the oil-stained windshield of car number 43, you're riding with the greatest stock car driver in the history of the game. Two ribs broken right out there in the middle of things, sliding his way through. Petty has made a move with a piece of strategy that might give him number 201 this afternoon, the seven-time champion. Looks at Bobby Hillen, who just cut back in front of him. They move around Greg Saxon, the 75, in that five-degree bank straightaway. Battle for second. Rusty Wallace puts the Pontiac there. Tim Richmond in third. Oh, oh on to Wallace Shepard. He got a little high coming off of that turn and straight the wall. What a great save. Had he not collected that car, he'd have wiped out about 10 automobiles. Oh, that is pressure and then some heart attack city was right.
right there in turn four for just a moment. Back straight away. Earnhardt deployed in first, maintaining second for the moment. Looks like Wallace, to here they come. Now that's the Baker car, lap down. And there is some separation between that leader and the second and third place man. Check in on Neil Bonnet's car here. Boy, it looks like a land rush. But can be. Jim Wicks' oh, car is well, not running quite as well as he did a little bit earlier. And Kyle Petty has moved around him now. He's dropped to fourth. To third now. Kyle clipping another spot into third, and Morgan Shepard is pitting on, after that hair raising moment up in turn four. Well, he overshot his pit. He may have cut a break. I have. He couldn't stop or didn't stop. He may have cut a break fly. Morgan Shepard came in, couldn't stop him, right back out again. Number three. Earnhardt in first. And look at this gaggle of automobiles. There's Rick Wilson down on the inside of that yellow car. Rusty Wallace. And there's Richard Petty looking back at this collection. He's in a position right now that he doesn't want to be in. He's got Rick Wilson down on the inside of him, and that is definitely holding him up. The lead pack of cars is able to pull away while they race side by side, Jim. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is, is use it all up here, and I'm speaking about fuel on the Earnhardt car. He's out in front and would like someone, I would think, to draft it, but they could find a lap car to try to conserve a little. But it'll be a while before he'll get a lap car. Here's Morgan Shepard coming back into the pit, so this is a very costly situation for him. He was running in ninth place, one lap behind the lead. Gears down. And I don't think he has any brakes. Well, not good brakes, apparently. He, he floated some, but he was not able to stop on the, the money there when he came into the pits. He may take the penalty. Pits like that. There's Waltrip scooting by Richard Petty. Darrell Waltrip, I don't believe, is in that lead group. He's down a lap. Yes, he is. But he's still in there racing hard in the thick of the, the battle. Well, Richard Petty is adding the drama as we look at Rusty Wallace here. Second place man to this car, number three, Earnhardt. Joey Bell at 158 laps. And Richard Petty is coming into the pit. Petty is pitting. Richard Petty, unscheduled stop on pit row. He oh. has been in to someone. There's the, the right side of that car. Ken has some paint knocked off of the right side. Of course, we saw him in the middle of that three-car battle there a moment ago. Let's go to Mike Joy. Well, they sure didn't want to come in as Richard gets a cold drink. And you see the front of that car is all side tires. Richard felt he had one going down, and the tire has got some white paint all over it. I think he hit the wall. Well, Mike, he's going to be able to stay in the lead lap as he goes out a very quick pit stop by Dale Inman and the crew. Dale Earnhardt now coming down to the start finish line, and Petty is already into turn two, so he's staying in the lead lap. Now what he needs is a caution. There's that tire. They took off it. Yeah, he very definitely rubbed against someone, and I'll tell you, there's not much rubber there. In fact, on the side of those car tires, Ken, there is no rubber at all. You recall right down here in front of us a moment ago, they were running three yeah, wide, and he got pinched a little. I'm not so sure, but what, he got pinched off another car. There's Hill and Richmond. And Bobby Hill and running, running a very strong race here today. In six currently. Let me review for you how they run. Earnhardt first. Rusty Wallace second, Kyle Petty third, Davey Allison fourth, Tim Richmond fifth, Bobby Hillen sixth, Rick Wilson seventh, Richard Petty eighth, all in the lead lap. Down one lap in ninth, Darrell Walter in tenth, Lake Speed, 11th, Ken Schrader, 12th, Alan Kowicki. Uh, there's the Richmond car, and Hillen comes after it. I don't think Richmond's car is working as well as it did earlier, Ken, before he made this pit stop. And sometimes you put on a new set of tires, and when they run them a few laps, one tire might grow a little more than others. Richard Petty coming back in the pit, and that is what they call the stagger off. And if the tire does grow, well, it can make the car not handle as well. And here's Richard Petty once again, and this time it looks like they'll change the left side tires on his car. 
break here for Richard Petty having to make two pit stops. He does go a lap down now. A very quick pit stop for him, but he is one lap down. It leaves seven cars in the lead lap to decide our live coverage of the Michigan 400. And for Richard Petty, the afternoon all of a sudden grows much longer. Leader Earnhardt trying to draw a lead on his first victory on this track. The consensus is he will have to pit again. The second place man, Rusty Wallace, presumably he'll have to come back in another time. The question, Davey Allison running third, Kyle Petty in fourth, Tim Richmond fifth, Bobby Hill in sixth, as to who will decide it, or Rick Wilson in seventh. Right, Caution there's has trouble now. Caution has just come out on the speedway for Alan Kowicki, who will join this group. And our Quaker State resume, out of the race, Cope, Bailey, Mike Waltrip, Buddy Arrington, Butch Miller, Paul, and as we look now, Alan Kowicki's number seven, apparently unhinged an engine in turn three and is being rolled back to the garage area. Other cars out of the race, Bill Elliott seeking his fourth win, Connie Saylor, Kelly Arborough after his seventh today. The leaders all pitting, and the question about fuel is no longer an issue. Let's go to the pits and hear what's going on among these lead cars. Well, the pit crews can take a, a sigh of relief now. The way it was until this yellow came out, everyone would have had to make a quick pit stop for a splash of gasoline. The last time by, there was a 1.35 second interval between Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. And the pit crew can erase that if they make a little goof up. But now they're getting enough fuel to go to the end, and for all practical purposes, the pit men are finished. It's now up to the driver. Before this yellow, it was up to the pit crew. Back to you, Jack. Chris Economaki with his views through the three-quarter mark of the race. And as we take a look at the Quaker State summary, we've had eight leaders, 14 lead changes, and the average speed is at 155.487 miles per hour, still a record. And two caution periods in the race, total of seven laps. We're in our third caution at the present time. Car number three, Earnhardt pitted, no tires, just gas, and came back on the, on the track. We can take a look at what happened to Kowicki from Neil Bonnet's viewpoint. As he comes up on uh, Kowicki, as, as they go into the third turn, you can see the smoke out ahead, and so he moves to the inside. A very good move by him. You see Jeff Bodine in car number five move to the inside as well, and Kowicki had already got down out of the way of the oncoming traffic. So Alan Kowicki gives the opportunity to the drivers in the lead lap to get on pit road, fuel their cars, and they'll have a clean shot of the checkered flag. Yes, they can definitely run the rest of the way from here as far as fuel is concerned. As you say, that uh, question goes out the window. Richard Petty coming back into the pits once again for an adjustment by Dale Inman or the rest of the crew that go inside the car to, to make an adjustment on the car. Several other cars, Benny Parsons getting left side tires now too. The Al Alan Kowicki car, is, the, he brought it down pit road, Ken, and he's sitting on pit road now it looked like the engine blew as a lot of smoke came from it now he's out of the car so apparently it did he just brought it down there instead of taking it to the garage here's richard petty coming back out again now showing a lap down at issue is uh, tim richmond and if they were able to make any adjustments on his car at that point when they came in remember that he was falling back some i would i would say that Tim Richmond was glad to see this caution because his car was not working as well as it did earlier, so he'll get on a different set of tires now, and that should help him. Alan Kowicki pulled down pit road to give himself another lap credit here. Richard Petty and Bobby Allison, member of Racing's Elite, have been influential in their son's careers. Kyle and Davey have taken different routes, but both have been successful. Growing up, about the best way to get into the Winston Cup Series was to work hard and work from the bottom and work your way up. And so that's what I did. I started in the limited sportsman division, worked my way up to the Grand American Series, and then on into All Pro, Charlotte Daytona Dash, ARCA, and Bush Grand National before I ever ran a Winston Cup race. So I started running Winston Cup cars. I didn't come up through the through the other ranks. I started right. In fact, the second race I ever run was at Michigan. So uh, you know, I started from there and came came right into this stuff. 
story has been told before how he went to Daytona in his very first race and won an Automobile Racing Club of America event. And things certainly looked uh, very rosy, and it looked like it was going to be a Cinderella story. But the wheel fell off the wagon right after that, and it was a long time before uh, he won in Richmond, Virginia, in a race in which he was really blessed. The leaders all crashing as, as uh, Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip got together. And two or three others that collected in that incident gave him a win. Davey Allison, on the other hand, he's been coming up through all the short tracks, fighting his way to the very top. Mike Joy has another uh, a rookie of the year last year with him right now who's made a good race of it this afternoon. Mike? Well, it's kind of his home racetrack, and Alan Kulwicki hoped to do well here in his Ford, but something really came unglued. It really did, Mike. I don't know what it was. Just going in the third turn, the engine blew, and there was so much smoke I could hardly see. I just about choked to death, but that's racing. You know, it's, it's really too bad. The Zurich 4 Thunderbird was running real well for us, and, you know, we were having a good day. Everything was going just fine, and it just broke. So Kowicki is out of it today. Now, Richard Petty has had a multitude of problems here with tires. When he first came in, these are the tires that came off the right side of the car, and you can see the cord here very close to the outside rubber. They had to stop and change these. He got into somebody that was red and white. The left side tires look fine, but when he came back for that second unscheduled green stop, here are the left side tires with somebody's yellow and red paint on them. Now, back in the 60s, Detroit experimented on passenger cars with red striped tires and Goodyear had blue streak tires. I don't think this has a chance of catching on. For certain, with Richard Petty, he would be just as pleased to have them all in one color. Thank you very much. Take you to look at the speed breakdown in this race with one lap before they go back to racing. 166 miles an hour through the first 50 miles. Then it went down to 152. And then, as we came to the halfway point, we had ourselves a new record. Looked for sure like we were on the way at 300 miles. We'll just have to wait and see if David Pearson's mark from 1973 will be eclipsed. He did that one on an unstopped day. And David Pearson uh, has never announced his retirement again, but he hasn't driven in more than a year now. You know what I miss more than anything? Were well, those wonderful moments on pit road when Leonard Wood would get the car ready all those years and they always qualified on the pole and David would go high. And poor Leonard Wood would be all nervous and concerned and have no idea where his driver was. <laughs> David knew exactly when he was going to run, but he'd lead Leonard along for a long time. They still kid about that. David Pearson holds uh, one of the most enviable records here at Michigan from 72 to 76 in NASCAR and IROC events. He won eight races and 11 starts. If you're watching today, we're sure here. Ready for restart. Earnhardt looking to win for the first time. You see Schrader deployed down underneath him. Car number 90 man in second place as they get ready for a start will be Bobby Hillen and for the fans that might not know the reason the, that Schrader and the other cars are able to come on the inside that is a NASCAR rule that if they're one or more laps down that they can't pull up on the inside and the green flag wins. third is Kyle Petty fourth is Rick Wilson fifth Rusty Wallace sixth Davey Allison seventh Tim Richmond as they go back under green distancing the field and a blown engine on Rick Wilson. He almost loses control. He's scattering and that looks like he's throwing oil. Yes, it you does. You see him getting his own oil and I'm sure caution is out. Indeed it is. Other cars were really scrambling to get around him and it's a miracle going into the turn with that to happen and he being slaughtered to run the pack that we didn't see more trouble there than we did. Good driving. But what happens in an incident like that is that when the engine blows, it throws oil out underneath onto your rear tires, and it's exactly like hitting ice, and usually you're away to the races, or to the wall anyway. Back to the line they come, and back under caution. They race back to the line, and there is an oil streak on the bottom of the track. For three or 400 feet, you could see that line. And there were three cars that were trying to race Dale Earnhardt. He had to run hard to keep them a lap down. It was Dave Marcus, Kenny Schrader, and Darrell Walter were trying to get a lap down. So if Earnhardt backed off, they're going to get back in the lead lap. That much more competition for it. Another look at what just happened here to bring out still another caution. It probably says goodbye to our chance of any record here this afternoon at Michigan. There's Rick Wilson, engine. you see on the outside, the smoke begins to boil. And what a move. Is that Neil Bonnet on the inside? that's Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace, yes, in the car number 27. He made a super move there to keep from getting involved. And Wilson, 
tries to bring it back down to the inside of the racetrack, then takes it up a little bit, but he keeps the back end behind him and is able to stay and not spin it out. And here's from Neil Bonnetsky as he went in there. Now, watch right here. There's the blown engine. There are the parts beginning to fly. And all of a sudden, Neil Bonnet, as he dove down in there and missed the act, missed that action in front of him, looks like he got a crack in his windshield. Something bounced up and got him. Yeah, maybe something came off of Wilson's car and came right through there. Looked like a little bullet hole. That could, that could have been a wheel weight off someone. From Richard Petty's view, let's see what it looked like. There you see the smoke. And that's when you say, oh, my heart, I hope I'm going to get to the other side. When you see that smoke, there's not too many opportunities to do much of anything there. Well, there really isn't. And sometimes you can't see what is ahead of you because of the smoke. But what if you can see? You try to figure which way he's going to go. Is the car going to spin out? And if he does start spinning, you drive directly towards him because you figure he'll be gone when you get there. But I'll tell you, it's an ancient moment for any driver. And you make those moves strictly on instinct. And if you lift your foot off the throttle, you're almost guaranteed to be drop kicked by the man behind you or a guy two, two cars back because they can't see up in there and they are going to put their foot down and Very go true. through. That's right. So you gotta got to keep standing on it and not knowing exactly where you're going to go. That would seem to go against every instinct there is for self-preservation. Well, it, it does, but I think uh, most race drivers, after they've been at it for a long period of time, that they have planted things, their instincts are a little bit different, I think, than, than what they would have been before they became a race driver, because they plant things into their mind that'll just pop out at a given time, and maybe you make the right move and maybe you don't, but more times than not, they'll make the right move. But that's the move you see so many times on a short track where a guy will make a mistake because he forgets that there's eight or nine people behind him and they are, some of them are real veterans and they're going to try to come through. And that's an, a, a case not only of uh, Rusty Wallace making a great save, but everybody else out there as well. They really they pulled it out of the fire or we could have had a major calamity. More from Michigan in a moment. In this Michigan 400, stays up in front. A lot of drivers making some very instinctive moves just a few moments ago to keep the field all together with the exception of Rick Wilson. That frenzied activity we saw in turn four. The green is coming out. 173 laps complete of 200 as they come to the line. With Earnhardt first, Kyle Petty second. Bobby Hillett noses in there in third. Davey Allison, Rusty Wallace, Pickering go back in sixth. As we get ready to decide it here this afternoon. Got himself a very quick jump there. He didn't want Darrell Walker to beat him into the first turn and have a chance of getting his lap back. And boy, he has stuck his foot in the throttle now, and it's real really see what that car has. Not waiting, getting out and hustling. You can see the three leaving the field off the launch pad and rapidly uncoupling himself from the rest of the field. But the car that is really on the move is Rusty Wallace. He moved around the Bobby Hillen car and has taken over third and is now moving in on Kyle Petty. In front of Kyle Petty is the lap car of Darrell Walter. Very noticeable number 17. One lap down. Then you see Kyle Petty, who's up to second place. Here comes Rusty Wallace in third. And boy, he picks up the momentum, picks up the draft of Kyle Petty off the turn, and he's going to motor right around it going into turn three. Chevrolet first, Pontiac second, Ford third, Ford fourth. Well, Wallace had the strength yesterday in qualifying. Now, does he have enough to get Dale Earnhardt? Kyle Petty starts to race him side by side. Kyle on the inside going back for second spot. And that gives Earnhardt the opportunity to pull out another 50 or 60 feet. When you see side by side racing on a super speedway, that gives the other fellows who are running single foul a definite advantage. Back straight away. A bold move by Kyle Petty as he tries to get back into the pen for second position on Rusty Wallace. And if they would go into that single file line, the skirmish could develop with this man for the lead. 
Darrell Waltrip has caught up to Dale Earnhardt. He was, he was uh, some kind of two car lengths behind him then after their green flag, and now he has caught up to him. So either Earnhardt's not running as fast, or Darrell Waltrip has picked up the speed. 24 to go. Wallace dispatches Kyle Petty again and clambers back after Earnhardt. There's Davey Allison up on the high side as he moves around Buddy Baker. Meanwhile, in front, Waltrip looks like he's ready to try to get his lap back. Yes, he is. He is running very good now. The best we've seen him run all day. A breather for Earnhardt. If he could lock up in a draft with Waltrip, that might give him an advantage. 23 laps to go this time by. The Canon Greater Hartford Open is next this afternoon on CBS. We're live with you at Michigan International Speedway. Half a million dollars approximately to be decided in the next 22 laps next time on. They shriek and howl as they move down into turn number one. Earnhardt deliberately setting a pace that he thinks will bring him the checkered flag. Is it all the car has? I would presume so. That's his style. Wallace and now Kyle Petty willing to work in a draft and try to climb back up the ladder for one more peek at the top. Walter was able to catch Earnhardt, but he hasn't been able to move any closer to him, Ken, since he moved up, so maybe Earnhardt was just sort of cooling it there. For a moment, let's talk about that draft as we see car number 17 running a few feet back off the car number three. Well, certainly, when you're running about the distance that Darrell Walter is behind Dale Earnhardt, he is feeling the draft off of Earnhardt's car, which opens the air up, makes thinner air for him to run in, and that enables him to pick up speed, particularly on the straightaways here. Closing down, Wallace pulling in on the leader. Inch at a time. He is gaining on him right now, especially after they got into single file format, as he and Kyle Petty are now, and Kyle's coming right on up with Rusty Wallace, so the two of them working together seems to be an advantage. At turn one, definitely Wallace closing the interval. It shrinks. Smoke billowing out from the back. Of old Vanessa, car number 27. Raymond Beadle, the car owner, of course, a great world champion of drag racing. Look at this two-car draft. Bobby Hillen in the eight and the 28 running fourth and fifth. Bobby Hillen and Davey Allison down the back straightaway. So there's three events, two cars each here. Here's Earnhardt back to the line. Still being very cozy with Walter. That's a good buffer for him to have between the second and third place cars. Kyle Benny to his third and Rusty Wallace in second place. Davey Allison did move around to Bobby Hillen Jr. for the fourth position. But Hillen now has passed him back. Getting down for finish, and we'll be back to bring you the entire finish. Car number 27, Wallace, is being black flag. More on that story in a moment. As smoke billowing out of the back of the car, NASCAR officials ask him to come in. It looks like the rear end may be going, and I would presume somebody must have been on their radio saying they're getting covered up by car number 27. Unfortunate for Wallace, a tremendous break for Earnhardt, seeking his seventh win of the season here this afternoon. But apparently, Ken, he just made a stop-and-go situation in the pits, and apparently NASCAR is going to get it, let him go out and run by himself. He was running in the traffic and apparently was uh, putting out some grease onto the other cars running behind him, so they let him go on back out, maybe just to run by himself. Fearing that if something should happen, that those other leaders would be in trouble directly behind him. Here's Davey Allison, who now finds himself up into the fourth position. Let's review the top positions for you. Earnhardt first, Kyle Petty second, Bobby Hillen third, Davey Allison fourth, Tim Richmond fifth, Rusty Wallace shown in sixth. Those cars are in the lead lap, but now Davey Allison has moved around the Bobby Hillen car and has taken over the third position, and Tim Richmond is moving in now on Bobby Hillen. So we got a good battle right there. 183 laps complete. complete. Sorry, 183 down. 184 as they cross the stripe.
Davey Allison around Hillen finds himself third. Kyle Petty still secure in second place for the moment. There's Davey Allison. Here's Dave Despain. After finishing last in their last two races and blowing motors in three races in a row, Raymond Beadle's number two. Caution is out. I had a shot at this one. Caution had just come out on the racetrack. Raymond, quickly, what happened? Well, they black flagged us and brought us in because they said we'd been smoking. We knew it was. It just had a little crack in the pan. We were running okay, but I guess we got beat by the rules again today. It had been smoking all day. Did it get worse all of a sudden? And why didn't they bring you in and, and check it under that yellow? Well, I don't know. We could have made it the rest of the race. There was no problem. We just had a small crack in the pan. We tried to tell them, but they brought us in just to make sure it wasn't leaking oil on the track. So it was a consultation flag that brought Beetle in and cost this team a shot at victory here today. They still have hope, but now there's caution on the racetrack. Ken? That is about as hard a break as you can get. It is a tough break, no question about it, but apparently there was a lot of uh, oil or grease or whatever it is coming from the car and getting on the windshield of Kyle Petty and the other cars who were running behind him at that time, and I'm sure that that was the consideration by NASCAR. Do you think that was the prudent move there? Yeah, I think so. Harry Gant is on pit road and back out again. We are under a fourth caution now. Checking the track, I believe, in turn one. Indeed, they are. Back in a moment. Some other crews had called in, Ned. Indeed, one had. Kyle Petty. Yes, he had called in to his crew and said that no oil was coming out of Rusty Wallace's car number 27. Just smoke. So apparently it wasn't bothering him that much. So that NASCAR apparently felt differently about it and decided to black flag him there for a moment. Wanted to take a gander. Now he has caught back up, though, with his caution. Rusty Wallace uh, is back up with the leader, so we'll see what he can do. And you're riding with Kyle Petty in second position. At this juncture, 187 laps complete, 188 when they come by this time. On the inside, bottom of the racetrack, the number 17, Waltrip trying to get his lap back. He is now in seventh, one lap down. Directly in front is the yellow and blue car of Dale Earnhardt, seeking still another win. After having a great start to this season, it started to go backward. See his first win since uh, back prior to May. Then in the third position, behind Kyle Petty is Davey Allison. In fourth is Bobby Hillen Jr. Tim Richmond would come next, then Rusty Wallace. Now Richmond and a few of those other cars made pit stops, Ken. Dale Earnhardt did not of Kyle Petty. And Richmond now starts behind Wallace as they come to the strike. Richmond is on the tail end of the lead lap. Nothing to lose, so he puts the gamble on inside. And as they go down into the corner, Wallace goes to the high side. They stack the three deep. Tim Richmond is in the middle as they come around turn one. Darting back out in front goes Earnhardt. Waltrip falling back for a couple of cars. Kyle Petty is in second. Remember that Kyle won the 600 at Charlotte earlier this year. Earnhardt has some kind of a transmission in that thing, Ken, that he can get such a good jump on restarts, and I'm sure that they plan it that way to put a transmission in there so that they can get good speed out of their second and third gear before he goes into fourth gear, and it gives him a good jump on a restart. 189 complete. Getting down to the end of it. Ten laps to go next time by. Davey Allison running third in the Rainier Lundy car. Richard Petty's car, number 43, giving you an overview. He's running back in tent. Pulls alongside Bobby Allison. A few laps down. Terry Labonte directly in front of him. Have a malfunction on the camera from uh, Kyle Petty's car running the second position. There you see him. About 12 car lengths back. And here comes Davey Allison trying to close. Davey Allison to the inside. Two second generation drivers with 10 to go. Scrapping for second. Davey will take it. Davey Allison sweeping down to the bottom. Takes it high and goes looking for Earnhardt. There's the lead. There you see the interval as Davey Allison closes in. Will Allison as a rookie, the first rookie in the modern period, sorry to date you, Ned, <laughs> if he could pull it off to win free in his freshman year. Back to the strike. He's gaining on him. And he is definitely closing the ground. Davey Allison moving into the corner, 15 car lengths back at turn one. Dandy race all day, as it always 
Rhodes is at Michigan. Rusty Wallace showing smoke. Looked like he had to catch the car once there. Leg speed directly behind him. The car did get sideways with him momentarily. Back stretch. Interval about the same. Laps trickling away. All afternoon, Davey Allison sat here just nursing his car. Many thought the car maybe needed to do a little convalescing, that it had been hurt somewhere. Not the case. It's tough and strong. He's waited his time out, and he's there, and he cuts into Earnhardt's lead. Kenny seems to be holding his own through turns one and two, where they are right now. We see more smoke coming from Rusty Wallace, but in turn three and four, he definitely gains on Earnhardt, especially coming off of turn four. Watch him this time as he goes down the back stretch, approaching turn three. There you see Earnhardt. Diving deep. And behind him, there's that 28 car of Davy Allison. The crew chief on that car, just 26 years old, Joey Knuckles. And he has moved in a little closer as he came off the turn four. The car is very strong down this front straightaway. Of course, if you got it strong on one part of the racetrack, that's where you want it, especially on the last lap. Seven laps to go. Earnhardt looking for his 14th career win had a, from a correction Earnhardt in this race trying to win here for the first time in the Michigan 400 is seeking his 26th career win and again you watch as Davy Allison takes it very high a slightly different line that time, trying to gather in a little more speed. He is taking a different line from Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt keeping his car a little bit lower on the racetrack, but the higher groove is working for Allison because it gives him a good momentum as he comes off the turn. And as you pointed out, Ned, he backs up a little here in one. Yeah. But if you're running second, you don't want to stay in the same place if it's stabilized. You want to find some place new to try to get the advantage. Absolutely. And that's what he's doing. He's sorting out the asphalt. He's looking it over. There he is in second, maintaining third. Davey Allison, Tim Richmond in fourth. Back to the strike. Five to go. At that time, Davey Allison took a big bite out of that lead. He is definitely closing in. What poise for a new driver moving into the Winston Cup Series. Of course, he comes by it naturally. He's been in a racetrack since he was one year old. But Earnhardt gained a little back on him through turns one and two, but when they hit the straightaway on the back stretch, Allison is able to pick up a little draft now, moves in a little closer, and then as he moves into the turn three, he moves in closer yet. There's the overview of the top three. Petty dispatched out back in the middle. Davy Allison up front, Dale Earnhardt. Waltrip a lap down. Maintaining seven. To the strike. And four to go is the signal. Harold Kinder holding out four fingers to them as they flash below the starter's stand. And into the corner. Allison trying to think up something. Meanwhile, Kyle Petty wants to get back into it. Kyle trying to close up. New talent making their weight felt in Winston Cup, and you're seeing it here this afternoon. Now we just have our picture back in Kyle Petty's car. He maintains third. He tries a little lower line here. And Davey Allison going a little higher in turn four, but it's working for him because he has momentum when he comes off of that turn. But he's, if he catches Earnhardt, can he pass it? And three to go, and that time, Davey went all the way to the bottom. He went right to the bottom of the track. The difference is 3.03. He's testing to see where he can make his move if indeed he is, is able to get right up on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt. Time is running out on him, though. Here's Mike Joy. Joey Knuckles, crew chief for Davey Allison. He's caught him. Now, what can he do with him? Well, right now he's out there hunting him a place in line, you know, uh, trying to figure out where your weak spots are. Gonna have to get a run at Old Dale. He's run awful good all day, but we've been right there digging, so uh, this is it for the money. I'll hope to see you in a little while. You're only gonna get one shot. This is it. <laughs> and two to go. Two laps remaining. 
Young Davy Allison. Father is 182. Some people say he's 183 races. Seeking his third win. This is his freshman year, his rookie year. It's been some time since we've had a rookie like this. And car owners like Rainier and Lundy willing to gamble on a rookie with a piece of equipment that had been Cale Yarbrough's property for so many years. Ken, we talked at the top of the show about the youth. Kyle Petty is 27 years old. Davey Allison is 26 years old. Dale Earnhardt, not an old man, at 35. They're trying to age him a little right here as the white flag comes out. Down to the strike, dropping all the way below the line. Earnhardt getting really fancy as he tries to break the draft, and Allison moves in. Davey Allison definitely closed the ground. Car working so well on the low side of the racetrack in turns one and two will let him pick up a little bit of an advantage. It might be enough to hold off Allison's advantage in three or four, but we'll see. Here they come. Last lap to decide it all. Earnhardt, the defending Winston Cup champion, trying to hold off Davy Allison. Allison is making his move. He closes. He pulls up. He's pulling alongside. Davy Allison on the high side. Earnhardt on the bottom. Here they come to the line. Allison trying to drop low as they come to the line. It will be by four or five car lengths. Car number three. He gave him a thrill. Earnhardt has done it. Joey Knuckles and his team will have to wait another day here in Michigan. Cecil Gordon, the static, Lula Rosa, Kurt Shelverdine. Boy, for all those guys, this is some moment. Dale winning number 27. Super Speedway win number 13. How about that? I'll tell you, he drove a tremendous race today, but he had a race to drive on those last few laps because he had some competition on his tail. Dale Earnhardt, one tough customer. Proving to be so here at Michigan today. His first victory here. His best previous finish, 1984 when he finished second. Let's go down to Mike Joy with that second place team. Joey, you guys were jumping almost as if you'd won this race, but not quite a super run for you folks today. Well, we had a couple unscheduled stops here. Uh, we've, our first caution flag stop, we left out of here and we had an equalized tire, and then we ran over something when Rick Wilson blew his engine down there. So we had to come back in, so it was catch up all day long. We, we practiced good here, and uh, this is Davey's first run, of course, here in a Winston Cup car, and I'm just so tickled for him and the car owners, the people at Texaco, and this... My whole crew here, man, they really fight hard. You're going to hear a lot from us in the future. Well, you guys were waving and cheering at him afterwards. Congratulations on a good run today. Thank you. We'll be back. Winner pulling in to victory lane. Dale Earnhardt has done it again for this fine Richard Childress team. We'll be down there to talk with him in just a moment. Well, he gave it a great run today, Ned. No question about it. The car worked well, excepting one time when they put on left side tires, they slowed a little bit from what he had been running but once they got a caution flag were able to put four tires on it then he was the class of the field after that taking a big drink of water just relaxing for a moment wipe off some of the grime all that tire and grease and he has had Dust. a tremendous year this year on the circuit of course he leads the point standings and of course is assured of of uh, that $150,000 bonus that Winston will pay next week after the race at Daytona. No, she's not here. Not here. Kyle Petty may move back into fourth on the uh, effort he put out today. We'll have to wait and see the total tabulated points. Victory Lane, the assembly beginning to gather there for the awards program to the number three for the seventh time this year, coming home victorious. It's Dale Earnhardt's day. The man who has won some $5,600,000 has just added a fair-sized bundle, and he sets out. Here's Chris Economaki. We've got, here's, here's the winner, Dale Earnhardt, smiling and acknowledging the products of the crowd. They booed him when he was introduced this morning. Doesn't make any difference what they say, does it, Dale? We beat, we beat him today. Uh, car run good all day. Uh, David was getting tough out there, but we had a little something going wrong with the fuel system. It was uh, cutting off about halfway down the straightaway, a little bit spluttering. But, you know, we held on anyway. 31 one hundredths of a second was the interval on my stopwatch. Were you worried about Davey catching you? Yeah, after the car started uh, spluttering a little bit at the end of the straightaways, uh, it runs smooth all day, and my weather's getting low on fuel. We had a fuel press problem or what, but it starts spluttering there at the end. About the last five laps. Are you aware of how big this one is, Dale? It's yeah. number seven on the air, $150,000 bonus, and a big leg up in the point standing, probably championship number three. 
Well, it means a lot for Chevrolet to win here at Michigan for a long, for the first time in a long time. Uh, we've been working awful hard on this Monte Carlo, and uh, Chevrolet helped us out with some tests we did up here. And, you know, the car ran fine. Richard and Lou and all the guys, they just did a super job. Well, the old heartbeat hot rider was really thriving today, wasn't it? It was. She's heart beating right on. Okie doke. Dale Earnhardt, today's winner. Congratulations, Dale. And back to you, Ken Squire. Thank you, Chris. We're going to have a lot more for you from the Michigan International Speedway and the celebrated stars of the Winston Cup Series who have given us so much action and so much drama here today.